This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, Ian here, Derek J. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us online by visiting freetalklive.com, where you get to control the content of the site. So, like the show, where you can call in about anything you would like to discuss. Our website allows you to post anything you want. And then other listeners will determine, via their votes, through a Reddit-based voting system, what is the most interesting uh, that uh, you know, or what are interesting things? It's it's kind of a weird ranking system. There's no, I don't really know how it works, <laughs> but you <laughs> you vote on things and they show up on our front page at freetalklive.com. Uh, so lots, of course, to talk about here tonight. In fact, Mark, you've got a story out of the government schools of America. Where's this one from? Uh, from Somerville, South Carolina, right near Charleston. All right. Uh, NBC12.com. A Somerville high school student who says he was arrested and suspended after writing about killing a dinosaur using a gun in a class assignment has hired a lawyer. Uh, Attorney David Ayler, who is representing the 16-year-old Alex Stone, said his client's arrest over a creative writing assignment on Tuesday was completely absurd and is seeking an appeal uh, to appeal the suspension and proceed with the legal issues of Stone's arrest. This is a perfect example of political correctness that has exceeded the boundaries of common sense, Ayler said in a statement released on Thursday. Students were asked to write about themselves and a creative Facebook in a and a creative Facebook status update just days into the new school year. My client was arrested and suspended after a, after a school assignment. The Somerville Police Department, who arrested Stone on Tuesday on a charge of disorderly conduct, which of course is like the catch-all when it comes to charges. It's mm-hmm. like, we didn't know nothing about making real charges, so we got this one we use all the time just in case. And uh, is disputing Stone's account of the arrest. The information that is being reported is grossly incorrect in reference to uh, what led to the juvenile being charged, said Captain John Rogers, a Somerville Police uh, statement released on Thursday, the charges do not stem from anything involving a dinosaur or writing assignment, but the student's conduct. Stone said that he and his classmates were told in class to write a few sentences about themselves and a status as if it was a Facebook page. Stone said in his status he wrote a fictional story that involved the words gun and take care of business. I killed my neighbor's pet dinosaur, and then in the next status I said it. I brought the gun to school to take care of business, Stone said. Stone says uh-huh. that... Okay. Yep. Stone says his statements were taken completely out of context. I could understand. Yeah, it sounds like ridiculous fiction here. I mean, obviously, no one has a dinosaur, so clearly this seems to be in the land of fiction. This doesn't sound like a violent fantasy at all towards destroying real human life. Well, if he were writing this in a math class, that would be different, but this is a creative Creative writing writing class. This is a perfectly appropriate place to be writing a fictional story like this. And fictional stories, the ones that I've seen that sort of make it to the big time, you know, movies, video games, these kind of fictional stories— Lots of guns. They have conflict. Uh, It's one of the real factors you need to have for a fictional story to be interesting is to have conflict. I I remember learning about that in school. Like, you know, there's man versus man, man versus nature, man versus whatever, robots. Dinosaur. (laughs) Dinosaurs, yeah. So there's all these different types of conflict that you can have, but uh, you've got to have conflict to have a story. Yeah, and uh, conflict is very easily shown in visual mediums with uh, physical conflict. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't think, you know, I wonder whether you could do a 90-minute movie (laughs) and just show sort of interpersonal conflict and have it be compelling. Because I think you'd really destroy Hollywood if you could get, if you had to get rid of guns. It's not even September yet, and the school police are already arresting students for victimless crimes. I mean, really, the, the school year hasn't even begun. What is this, week one, and they're already arresting kids for stories they're writing? You know, assignments? If you probably got an A. I mean, it has no bearing on the grade that he got. And think about how this affects the other students in his classroom. I don't know if the police came into his classroom to arrest him or not. I don't know. But think about what it tells the rest of the students in that creative writing class. I mean, they're going to be writing some pretty boring stories this year. They're not going to want to venture out and use their imaginations. They're just going to be afraid. Hey, is the next word I write going to signal the police to come in and arrest me? 
Well, it's certainly true that Hollywood blockbuster films are usually involve violence, but there are plenty of films, Mark. Art, that, art uh, house films. Yeah, art house films, chick flicks. Um, many of those don't have much violence. Maybe somebody gets decked in a chick flick or something like that, but you're not going to see anybody waving guns around. But that is around. a cheap way of showing conflict, right? Yeah. Even the decking, right? Like yeah, it's not, sure. you know, the the verbal argument between, you know, the one guy that wants the girl versus right. the other guy that wants the That's girl conflict. could take uh, minutes to right. show, whereas the punch takes seconds, and it shows that this was an important conflict. It's mm-hmm. just, it's a visual, you know. I think it's a bad visual because it might show that, hey, you know, if you're in a dispute with another guy over a girl, maybe the best thing to do is hit the guy. So just to be clear, this guy, 16, was charged with disorderly conduct for writing a fictional story. No, he was charged with disorderly conduct for being upset about being suspended over a— Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that detail. uh, That's kind of the—that's the nuance to it. Uh Uh-huh. So they— Gave him a suspension over writing a fictional yes. story. And you can't be upset about it, and or he, else you'll be charged with a crime. Let me, and then let he me read made it to you. Known. Okay. So, um, investigators say the teacher contacted school officials after seeing the message containing the words gun and take care of business. And the police were notified on Tuesday. Somerville Police Department went through his book bag and locker, um, and the gun, and no gun was found. And according to the police, Stone was asked by school officials about the comment written in the assignment. He became very irate and said it was a joke. A Somerville Police Department report states that Stone continued to be disruptive and was placed in handcuffs. You see, being upset and expressing your upset at being treated like, uh, treating in just an insane fashion, this is a crime. I have the uh, statutes here from the state of South Carolina. You said this was South Carolina, correct? Uh, Public disorderly conduct... Uh, Section 1A, the accused was found on any highway or public place in a grossly intoxicated condition or was conducting himself in a disorderly or boisterous manner. B, this is the one I think that they're going to apply here, that the accused did use obscene or profane language on any highway, public place, gathering, or in hearing distance of any church or schoolhouse. Uh Uh-huh. So uh, presumably the young man said something profane in his tirade or in his anger about being suspended, and that will likely be what they claim in this particular statute. But I wonder, you know, how many disorderly conduct charges of this, you know, like this uh, actually go up to trial? How many of them end up in trial? Because it seems to me a pretty clear violation of your right to free speech if you can't say something obscene or profane within earshot of a church or schoolhouse or on any highway. (laughs) So everybody who's ever been upset about somebody doing something stupid on the road in front of them and has said, you know, GD or F this or whatever. Disorderly. You're going to jail. Apparently this is a misdemeanor offense. I mean, come on. This seems like a clear violation of free speech. And what was it? There was a mom in a grocery store who was recently charged with disorderly for cursing in front of uh, somebody's kid or something like that. Her kid. Okay, whatever. Either way, you know, the, again, these just seem so ridiculous. I wonder if anybody's ever really been convicted in an actual criminal trial or if everybody just takes the plea deal well, or the, they, vast, the charges get dropped. The vast majority of people do play, take the plea deal or the charges get dropped. I mean, that's kind of what it is. Uh, far fewer than 1% of cases in this country end up in at trial. Yeah. And I think that I don't know what that says about the judicial system other than it sounds like it's completely broken. Let's go to John. He's in northern Minnesota listening to WNMT. Hey John, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah. Uh that story about the boy getting arrested for at school. Yes, sir. That's a fantastic commercial for homeschooling. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Yeah, nobody, no government bureaucrat has threatened my child with uh, with arrest for whatever it is that he says about um, whatever's going along going on in our house. Yeah, that's good. I'm with you, John. Anything else you okay. want to share tonight? Uh, well, uh, is, is Social Security a mandatory thing for well, someone to get the number? That's a good question. Totally unrelated, but we'll let you get back to that here in a moment. We'll answer you when put, we put, come back with John. Hang on, hang on. Your, we'll put that on the plate for, here. Uh, you're welcome to stay or, or go. 855 450 free. Social Security, is it mandatory? Uh, we will reveal our stories here in moments, or at least I'll talk about mine. This is Free Talk Live. 
Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation, easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, Angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Say, do you think a 16-year-old, or anyone for that matter, should go to jail in South Carolina for, let's see, up to 30 days? Because they cursed in public? Because they cursed within earshot of a church or schoolhouse? Because that's what's actually happened, apparently. There is a young man who's been charged. He hasn't gone to jail yet, but he's, uh, he's been charged with disorderly conduct for being upset 
about being suspended for writing a fictional story for his creative writing class. And school. having his uh, bag and locker search. Oh, lovely. Well, we're going to continue that story. You can also share with us your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. If you are enjoying Free Talk Live, there are a lot of great features on the site that you can interact with. You can support the show in various different ways, like through the AMP program. Become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. And you can also get a free pound of coffee from BuzzBox. Shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% gray Arabica. Mark is, uh, I don't know if you got coffee in your container tonight, but you've I been, just finished it. Uh, okay, yes. You've been pounding through the uh, the buzz box here. You are a Love huge it. fan of the buzz box. It's and, great. you know, buzz box has great coffee, but they also do some pretty great stuff in the world, like teaming up with World Vision to finance microloans. Every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up for their auto ship program at coffee.freetalklive.com, every 10 listeners equals one new microloan being issued to some folks around the world who need some help uh, with making a better life for themselves. Plus, BuzzBox has also set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op so you can get started with your free pound. You just have to pay the shipping cost to get it to you. And, of course, you can cancel your subscription at any time. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, we can continue with the disorderly conduct story with this uh, teenager, but our last caller, who had uh, correctly pointed out that this is a great reason to keep your kids away from government schools. Uh, they're, look, if you've got kids and they're in the government schools, really, really, you should do everything you can to get them out. Do whatever it takes, I think, to get them out of those government schools, whether it's putting them in a private school, homeschooling, unschooling, getting together with groups of people to facilitate more homeschooling and un unschooling. I think these are the ways to get your kids out of the, the clutches of these government bureaucrats who seem really intent on giving them criminal records in a lot of cases before they've even left the the high school. I don't think they're intent on that. They're trying to uh, protect themselves. They're saying, you know, if this kid brought in a gun and then shot up the school and they had some prior knowledge that he wrote some creative essay saying, oh, he was going to shoot a dinosaur with a gun and they didn't investigate it, well, then they, they're afraid that they would be on the chopping block. And to be. I think that it's the rare instance that something like this happens, the average person who sends their kid to public school is unlikely to deal with something like this. Now, is that true? I, I mean, there were thousands of people in Texas, thousands of students in just Texas alone uh, who had received Class C misdemeanor charges, or maybe it was Class D, but either way, some low-class misdemeanor charge for doing things that we all did in school and that were just sort of part and parcel of growing up. Uh, they've now turned into criminal charges. So I don't know, Mark, if it, the average person will or will not have an encounter I, like I, you this. You know, I don't know what the average person means, but I do know that it was heavily weighted on in those circumstances uh, against people who are ethnically disadvantaged you know what i mean so that's is that unfortunate. true i don't recall that detail that that story. detail was what i recall in the mississippi story okay mm. um also mississippi I, I recall that one but not texas okay um i don't remember you know i, I can't remember i wouldn't doubt it for a second mm -hmm. but for me what the 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 point the most important and salient point here is is that you can't create uh creativity and zeal excitement you can't create intelligence. You can't really create any of these things. But you can destroy all of those things. And the public school system seems, from what I can tell, to be set up to do precisely that. That it makes kids <laughs> far less excited about learning. It uh, p pigeonholes them into learning a specific way and then cripples them in learning a different way throughout their life because... You don't stop learning in school. Once you get out of school, you continue to learn. And the people that have learned how to learn, learn far better than people who did, ha, never did learn how to learn because, you know, they, well, I guess I, if I want to learn how to do X, I'm going to have to go sit in a classroom and have mm -hmm. somebody tell me how to do it. Right. This is a terrible way to learn how to, it's an expensive, inefficient way to learn how to learn things. I don't want my son to learn that. And... Uh, so I don't put him in the public school system. I also know that kids are excited about whatever they're excited about at any given time, right? Like they get on little jags right now for whatever reason. Jack's excited about the game Risk. Well, mm. here's a real opportunity. He wants to play with the little plastic pieces, yeah. right? Here's a real opportunity. We can do geography and math and uh, sort of creativity all in talking because he, he doesn't want to play regular Risk. That's boring. He wants to play... 
the the version of risk that he comes up with on the fly and you know as daddy and mommy kind of work with him on it then we can talk about oh well you want to take uh, you want to take madagascar well we have to learn something about madagascar before we take madagascar <laughs> and you know if you know one thing about a given region you know a lot about it yeah, that's kind of fun. Right, it's, it's pretty awesome. And then how many troops, and how many troops are over there? You're and, probably learning a lot, too. Uh, well, it's every every time with, uh, mm, with uh -huh. the things that he's learning, I'm you know, learning something, too. But, you know, so this is the way that you use excitement to learn something. But you can't do that with 25 kids no. who are running around and feel like a bunch of different stuff's going on and those kind of things. You might be able to do it with two or three or four or five but I don't think you can do it with any more than that. And that's why I'm against this whole institutional setup of, of education that we have. I'm not just against private, public schools, although I think public schools show the least amount of accountability for their actions, as evidenced by the fact that the cops came in, threw this kid's locker, threw his bag, um, and then arrested him for complaining about it. Yeah, I think they're the least accountable. But I went to private school. I went to private school far more than I went to public school. I went to uh, public school for three years. I went to sort of a 50-50 school where I paid and went. Were and, you ever homeschooled? I was never homeschooled. But I went to uh, public school for the first eight years. Hmm. It's no, It was no different, really. Mm -hmm. It was just better at doing school than the public school was. More attention. So, yeah, I would, uh, if I had kids, I would make sure they didn't go to the government schools. The last guy we had on the phone also asked about Social Security. I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure we didn't dodge that or forget about it. So, I, we weren't really clear on what the question was. Derek, you thought it was something different I thought than the I? I thought the question was, do you have to get a Social Security number? Because some people I know don't have one and have really? never had one. Okay. I think I know some of those people, as yeah. a matter of fact. Um, and that's kind of that has some benefits. Like uh, just one of these. What is people, the benefit of not having a social security number? Well, I'll tell you. One of these people was uh, detained in New York City for being a youngster who didn't have ID on him mm -hmm. to prove that he was allowed to be out on, at school time, and uh, the cop was not able to charge him with any crime or incarcerate him because he's not part of their system. I love it. They I'm didn't surprised have they a social security number. They hold him forever like they did our friend Sam Dotson who refused to identify himself. They couldn't. They didn't even know what paperwork to do. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. It, yeah, it can also be difficult too because like getting a job can be a little bit tricky. That's right. Um, get a, get a, uh, a bank account. Yeah, there's that too. Toll free number tonight, 855 450 free. But I see no obligation. Our caller was asking about obligation for Social Security, and I see no obligation to pay into it. I know I haven't done it for over a decade. More on the way. This is Free Talk Live. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't forgot your name, but we, we, we had 9-11, right? Uh-huh. Okay, uh, well, if, if, if they weren't here, could it have happened? Could what have happened? If who wasn't here? Could, 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 if, How if wasted the, are you? That's what I want to know. No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, I'm not wasted. Okay. No, please just, just listen to me. Okay. <laughs> If the people weren't here that that, that that drove the planes into into the Twin Towers, yeah. right? They flew them. They didn't drive them, but okay. No, I'm not saying that. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Because uh -huh. now you... you, you I, 
Wow. Yeah, yeah, I gotta think a minute. That's all right. They were, we got they nothing were, but time. They, they, Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free. Whether you want to talk about Social Security, government school, or whatever happens to be on your mind, you may do so. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J. is here courtesy of his website, DerekJ.me. And it is a, such a great uh, resource, Derek. I was there yesterday because I I, knew, I needed to get on your live channel, and I couldn't remember what the uh, the URL was for. And you you know, don't have to. Right. You've got all your stuff handy right there on the left-hand side of the page mm-hmm. at DerekJ.me. And there's a lot to catalog. I mean, this is yet another uh, busy media. The last two days are busy media days uh, yes. for you. You've got Peace News Now, which is a Sunday and Tuesday show on LRN.FM. So you did that yesterday. You also co-host the Freedom Fiends yeah, every I now and then. Did an episode well. of Black Sheep Rising, a local show here Oh, you did that Keen. yesterday too? Yeah. Wow. And then today, uh, you're on with us. You actually filled in for the Angel Clark show on LRN.FM. And I think those are the only two you're doing today. But, That's right. Uh, yeah. you, you do like five or six or seven. I don't even know how many shows every single week. It's incredible. And you have been uh, you put something out there recently that you are a full time activist, that this, this is the direction your life has gone. And and yeah. you like to keep it that way. Yeah, right? it's so cool. So like this is what I dreamed up. I dreamed this years ago. Like, hey, really? what if I could be full time doing activism all the time and get paid for it? And then I used my imagination to make that reality, and here I am. And I'm still working on it. Like, uh, I would like to make a You'd better income. You'd like to be income. a full-time activist that makes more. Well, yeah, I'd like to make a better income. But sure. right now, you know, uh, people send me donations through Bitcoin, and that's one of the easiest ways for people to donate, because I can just put a QR code right up on the screen when I'm presenting, and then boom, if people like what they see, they send me some Bitcoin, and there yep. you go. For people that aren't watching you live, or who are listening to you on the radio, what's the best way for them to go and find some sort of 
way to contribute on your website. It's just as easy. You go to DerekJ.me, and there's a link that says sponsor. So it's DerekJ.me slash sponsor. Bitcoin accepted. What else? That's it. That's I, it. Only I take, Bitcoin only. Well, Bitcoin and Litecoin and Feathercoin okay. and oh, Darkcoin, wow. all, coin, all kinds of <laughs> cryptocurrencies. But since 2012, I've sworn off the king's cash. I don't take it. I don't take wow. American dollars. They're blood dollars. They're war dollars to me. I don't want to support that. It, you know, you'll hear an ad on Free Talk Live sometimes where I'm talking about how if you do away with the American currency, you're no longer supporting the American empire. Mm -hmm. You opt for something else, well, then you're taking your power away from that currency. I think that's incredible. And you're certainly not in the process supporting some other empire either. Right. Like right. it's just withdrawing your consent from this concept that, uh, you know, this monopolistic top down concept that people should control other people with threats of violence. I love yeah. it. I think that you know, we haven't really even talked about you doing that here on Free Talk Live in any meaningful fashion. I, I think that's a, a really inspiring thing for people. I mean, to see, because, you know, we've seen uh, like, another world is possible. So, right, just to bring our listeners up to speed, Bitcoin is this decentralized currency. It's not issued by any bank or any government and, you know, allows you to send money anywhere in the world in basically an instant for close to zero cost. I mean, just a few cents above zero uh, per transaction. And it's just an amazing technology. It's been uh, absorbed by Dell Computer. Wikipedia is now taking Bitcoin. So lots of big companies and even small companies are now taking Bitcoin. But the fact that, that you have adjusted your life to where... This is what you use. Bitcoin is how you live. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's that's un I think that's unsung to some extent. I mean, I've seen news articles written by like you know Bitcoin Magazine. Their author yeah. goes for a week on yeah. Bitcoin. Or I used a month. Bitcoin for a week, right? <laughs> or like I don't know, was it? Uh, I guess yeah. There's been maybe somebody's done it for a month, but yeah. I, I've seen these stories out there and they're cool. Like they're th those I think are inspirational to people. But here you are, you've now. What two years you said since 2012 at yeah. some point in 2012 since, or close to two years since fall of 2012? So we're so coming on to two years now. It's that November that, I that you've spent all Bitcoin. Yeah, like like on for everything. Groceries, groceries for travel, clothes. for everything. How do you spend Bitcoin for groceries? Uh -huh. I buy my groceries at Target. Before that, I bought my groceries at Whole Foods, and you can do that through a third party app called Gift G Y F T. Mm -hmm. You can use that uh, app on your smartphone to buy gift cards using Bitcoin. And so when I'm shopping at these stores that, you know, accept Bitcoin through a third party app like Gift, mm -hmm. I just go do my regular shopping and then I total it up in my head when I'm at the end or I make a guesstimate, buy a gift card in that amount while I'm standing in line at the register. <laughs> and then I pay for my goods. The register person doesn't even know I paid in Bitcoin. Right. I think it's amazing that that level of dedication to this, the fact that you've been able to do it for so long, so consistently, I think is something that is really, uh, it's unheard of. And I wonder how many other people in the world, there must be somebody else, others who are doing this mm -hmm. at that level. Uh, but I haven't heard anything about them. And I would like to know, you know, how widespread this is. How many people in the whole world have taken bitcoin to that level that that you've taken it i mean i'm i'm uh i'm inspired i'm a little jealous like i wish i could do that i feel like you know that would be more complicated for me because obviously you know we accept money for advertising on mm -hmm. free talk live and but we do get in some months it's as much as half of yeah. our revenue in bitcoin no there's there's a good chunk of our advertisers that want to and do pay us in bitcoin and we happily accept it um, but obviously, we wouldn't want to go to our existing advertisers who are paying in cash and say, well, now you got to pay in Bitcoin. Yeah. That's probably not going to work out. So, you know, it, part of my job is to handle cash. But I wish I could do what you're doing. I think it's incredible. And the fact that you've made it work is proof of concept and that you've made it work for more than a week is proof of concept that this is valid, that this is doable and that you can live. I mean, you seem to be living fairly comfortably. I live well. And yeah. in the meantime, there are only more businesses that accept Bitcoin than since the two, two years, years ago. ago that I started. So it's only gotten easier. It just gets there's every month more businesses accept Bitcoin. Yeah. Pretty more people should do this. Are. I just bought uh, a hotel room in Las Vegas. I'm going mm -hmm. out to an event next month, and I, you know, for Free Talk Live, and I paid in Bitcoin. With what service? It was CheapAir.com. Mm -hmm. Is that the Expedia or is that a, a competitor? I think it works with Expedia in okay. some way because I mean, I've seen that I've seen the name Expedia show up on their website, but it, right. I think it's branded. Huh. You know, maybe, I don't know. 
So they directly accept Bitcoin on they the They accept cheap air. Bitcoin, yes. Yeah, and, and not just for flights, but also for hotels and rental cars, too. I so did you I just pay for, for just hotel. the hotel? I did. Um, I just didn't like the airfare that right. I got offered through the uh, the so service. So Southwest not yet taking Bitcoin. Southwest right. is not. Okay. And, you know, when, where Southwest goes, they, they tend to have the lowest rates. Yeah. I just don't want to pay a hundred bucks extra yeah. to pay in Bitcoin. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see who the first airline is that starts accepting Bitcoin. I wonder about that. So it's it's really been fun to to watch these different businesses come on with Bitcoin and, and Derek. So what are some of the key uh, the key companies you use? Obviously, you said Target is where you do think, your grocery shopping, clothing, yeah, I think things like that. Target is a big one because mm-hmm. they've got almost anything that I would want. And Walmart, they don't have any produce. Well, they have a they limited do. selection of produce, actually, they at do? this Target. Yeah, okay. they do. And uh, Whole Foods was another one because it was a grocery store in my Philadelphia area that I could use. I s- switched over uh, from Trader Joe's, another grocery store, because I was sad that they didn't accept Bitcoin. I was asking them each week, you know, hey, are you going right. to accept Bitcoin? Are you gonna? And they were like, yeah, we're talking about it. We're thinking about it. But they this didn't talk too long. Yeah, yep. this is what I do now is whenever I'm making a purchase with, uh, you know, cash, I don't mind doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and make your purchase if I have got to do business with your company. I've decided already that I'm willing to use spend U.S. dollars, but I ask every single time. Mm, yeah. You guys accept Bitcoin? And if they don't, if they don't know what it is, it's an opportunity to educate them. Yep. If they do know what it is, it's an opportunity to put a small amount of pressure on the business because in a lot of cases you're talking about bigger businesses. Right. You know. So. I've been doing this to to a lesser extent. I'm not cons- I'm not consistent, but more recently I've been doing it. Like I've been trying to buy a satellite receiver. For uh, radio stations, I, I buy s- these receivers and send them to stations that need them to get us on the air. And I've been trying to find a vendor in the radio business that will accept Bitcoin. Now, I don't pressure out. them in this way. Like, I will buy a satellite receiver today. The first vendor that takes Bitcoin will get my business. I'm not doing that. I didn't say that. Well, I mean, it's, it's to some extent, if you're holding off on buying, you're I didn't hold- say that either. Okay. I just said I was approaching businesses and asking them if they accept Bitcoin. Because I was looking to buy something. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Whether it's Bitcoin or government schools, you can tell us whatever you want here on Free Talk Live. Get your thoughts out there. And you can also join us on Skype. By the way, our Skype username is lrn.fm. There's more coming up. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm -hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk free by calling 800-952-5760 Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. That's eight hundred nine five two fifty seven sixty. Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. 
Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt. 800-981-7590. If you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Since we're talking about school-related stuff, or we have been off and on, uh, throughout this hour with the 16-year-old who is being charged with disorderly conduct because he kind of uh, was upset after they suspended him over a story that he wrote at school, a fictional story. We can continue that. Your thoughts are certainly welcome. Also, I've got a story about a teacher who is facing rape charges for uh, sexual relations with her students. We'll talk about that. You can share your thoughts with us. Is that actually rape? We'd love to hear from you at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, we've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request real fast, and we will approve it. It'll then be very easy for you to reach out to us on Skype from that point forward. And those phone lines, by the way, are brought to you by ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your online data, meaning that before your info reaches the internet service provider that you use, it's encrypted. So the ISP can no longer know where you're going and what you're doing online. Right now, if you're not using ProXPN... They probably, your ISP is probably logging everything you do for as long as, in some cases, five years. So you can stop that from happening. Just go to download their software. It's free at proxpn.com slash FTL. Software is available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux setup's a little different. You don't even need to download software to make Linux work. It's pretty neat. Uh, Just Contact their support department to get the instructions for Linux. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go there and get started. When you're ready to upgrade to premium level account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can connect to, and the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites, then you can use our discount code, which is FTL50. And that gets you 50% off the price of an annual account for the lifetime of the account, which is a great deal. It breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month. But maybe that's not cheap enough for you. Maybe you want to save even more. Use Bitcoin, and then you'll save 62% off the price of the annual account with code FTLBTC, like Bitcoin. FTL, like Free Talk Live, BTC, like Bitcoin. So again, go to proxpn.com slash FTL to get started there. And uh, it's totally free to get started. Risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And they don't keep records of your online habits at all. That's proxpn.com slash FTL. Two codes you need to use. One for credit cards, that's FTL50, and then another for Bitcoin, which is FTLBTC. Let's go to Jeff. He's in 
Minnesota. Jeff, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how's it going tonight? What's on your mind tonight, Jeff? Well, um, I guess you guys are talking about this alternative currency stuff, Bitcoin or whatever it's called. And I'm just kind of curious, like, maybe I missed the first part of the conversation, but what, what's the point of it? I mean, what, what I mean, what? Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Why like, would you want to use an alternative currency instead of using the U.S. dollar? Right. Well, um, for one, I mean, I, I get. I don't necessarily agree with everything that our government does, but I mean, what what good is this going to do? So, Bitcoin allows a certain level of anonymity. So, if, for instance, you don't want uh, some any you you don't want anybody just to be able to know what your business is and what what you're doing. Um, it that's it's useful in that way. Um, you don't own the money that you have in the bank. The bank owns the money. You've lent it to them. This is evidenced by the fact that the government seizes bank accounts and freezes bank accounts all the time. With Bitcoin, you own the Bitcoins that you own, and no one can take them from you. The uh, the, the banking system tends to favor, uh, you know, crooks. Uh, for instance, if somebody wants to buy something from your business and then decides, you know what, I'm just going to tell them I didn't receive it and then disputes the credit card charge or whatever it is that they do, then you get a charge back. Bitcoins, that's not possible. And so business owners tend to like them because it puts them in charge of chargebacks rather than uh, some bank in charge of chargebacks. Don't forget that business owners also benefit and anybody benefits because when you receive money with Bitcoin, you're not paying fees to credit card companies either. So, you know, your business owners out there are spending three to five percent per transaction. If somebody if a customer comes in with a credit card, that's why a lot of businesses you'll see, you know, five dollar minimum transactions, which, by the way, are usually violations of credit card terms of service. Uh, uh, but, but who cares, right? <laughs> nonetheless, that's the reason why, because the credit card's taking, you know, 30 cents per transaction plus 3% or plus 5% or something ridiculous like that. With Bitcoin, it's literally cents. I mean, six cents maybe per transaction. And sometimes you save money by using Bitcoin. I, for example, As a customer? Get, yeah, I get 3% back every time I use Bitcoin because they're not paying those credit card fees. And I'm a peace activist. I don't like what the, what the United States government does around the world. I don't like, um, you know, the 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 power that they have over other people in other countries, and I don't like the expansive model of its uh, its military. This can be held in place by a, um, a a commodity currency. Consider for a second that World War II was fought on the backs of war bonds. People voluntarily bought war bonds because they believed in the cause of World War II. When, when uh, George Bush was asked, uh, what can the American people do to support this war on terror? This is, you know, 2003 or whatever. He said, go shopping. And that is evidence of the fact that there's a big change. This change occurred um, in like 1970 under Richard Nixon. It's look, at, look up the Brenton Woods Accord. But, you know, there was a big change in the U.S. dollar. It's backed by nothing now. So a commodity-based currency holds in check the uh, proclivities of the state to enact war. Mm -hmm. That's a big answer, Jeff. What are your thoughts? So, so well, well, yeah, I mean, I guess my question, I mean, is, well, so, okay, I, I, I stick all my money in, in Bitcoin. Don't do that. Whatever. Don't do that. And, well, well, I'm you just saying. And, you don't want to so, put all your so eggs in one basket. the money then, you know, because, I mean, so the— if I stop paying my taxes for five years and they come knocking on my door and they want to know where all, all my money is, well, they're, it's all tied up in that. They can't take it. I mean, I'm sure they're going to find a way to get it out of there, too. How would they get it out of there? So I, I don't know. I'm just asking. I mean, it wouldn't that they be could considered a torture? Asset yeah, you they could torture you. They could waterboard you. They could uh, smack you in the knee with a wrench over and over again, and, and you tell them a, some kind of password or something. Sure. I mean, so it's it's essentially it's a a legal way to launder money then or to get rid of it just to put it in an offshore account essentially well that's not what i would i wouldn't call it laundering money i don't even know what that well, means that sounds like a legal term and i i don't know what the definition of it that suggests is. that government money is somehow clean and i would suggest just the opposite i would mm. suggest that u.s dollars drip in blood the blood of innocent people that are killed every single week by drones all across this country so no do i consider it laundering i do not 
Yeah, Bitcoin. Okay, I mean, so, I don't think so, Dell Computer is laundering money with Bitcoin. I mean, there's companies as large as Dell Computers and Wikipedia that are accepting Bitcoin in payments. I mean, you can go buy a brand new laptop or server or desktop right now on Dell's website, just like you could on any other site, except Dell is accepting Bitcoin, unlike the other computer manufacturers out there. Um, so, no, I mean, they're not laundering money, are oh, they? Oh, okay, so, I mean, you're you're getting paid, obviously, for something that you do, correct? Sure, yep. we sell advertising on Free Talk Live. Right. Okay. So now, I mean, just like me, if I let's say I wanted to put my money into this, and this is how I'm going to live my life, this is what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm still going to receive a paycheck from the company that I work for. That's going to be an American currency. So essentially, you're still supporting the American currency, are you not? Well, Derek J is uh, the one person in this conversation who has actually successfully removed all transactions from the dollar and is using Bitcoin. But the average person can't do that, at least not right away. Um, like you're saying, you're going to get paychecks probably not being paid in Bitcoin. Although it wouldn't hurt to ask the company, hey, can you pay me in Bitcoin if that's something that you want to have happen? But one thing that you can do with Bitcoin is there's exchanges out there. So our Tuesday night host, Johnny Ray, he has made a habit, at least the last I talked to him, he was doing this. Um, he's made a habit of putting 10% of every one of his paychecks into Bitcoin. And that's a real, like, that's a sensible investment strategy. I mean, as far as like protecting your money in alternative currencies is to set aside a certain amount every single month. And for instance, you could go to expresscoin.com and use a uh, wire transfer, check, money order, or even a cash deposit to easily turn that cash, that US, those U.S. dollars, into Bitcoin whenever you want to. So it's always there for you as an option. And I would point out that, uh, that there's, there is a, an amount of travel from uh, Stateville to Freedom Town, and that using Bitcoins is walking out, your, uh, walking out of the front door, walking out of the city gates of Stateville, and walking towards Freedom Town. Now, every time you're able to use it, every transaction, every company that uses Bitcoin, because most of them just turn them into dollars when you buy them. Currently, Overstock.com Overst is keeping 10% of their Bitcoin that they're being paid. That's correct. So there's a, there's another step along the road from Stateville to Freedom Town. Is to keep some of it rather than is, change it all out? Right. It's for people to continue using. And when people switch over, you know, you're you're closer to Freedom Town yet. Jeff, if you've got more questions, we are uh, you're welcome to hang on. We can come back to you here. Uh, more on but the way. sitting on your couch and saying that it doesn't do anything is sitting in, uh, is, is is staying in state. To there's build. more on the way here. You can also again go to expresscoin.com to get your cryptocurrencies, not just bitcoins, but Dogecoin uh, and several others, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, now available in Canada as well. So check out expresscoin.com. It's so easy. We'll come back with our two coming up. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F E E N P H O N E. Dot com. The Lumber Liquidators Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is on with over 250 of the latest styles all on sale now. Get Black Forest Oak Laminate for a crazy 39 cents a square foot. Beautiful and durable bamboo for just $159. Classic pre-finished gunstock oak hardwood for $149. All gorgeous Bella Wood pre-finished hardwood is on sale. Plus get special 24-month financing. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Hurry, this sale ends Tuesday the 2nd. The fall flooring season is here. Why aren't aren't you? Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee, and you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade, 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, August 25th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,280. Silver opened at $19.46. And Bitcoin is trading around $503.94. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. In the news, protests continued in Ferguson, Missouri over the weekend as the funeral for slain teenager Michael Brown drew closer. On Saturday, the NAACP led a march through the streets of Ferguson as support rallies for Officer Darren Wilson were held in a sports bar in St. Louis. Saturday night, the streets were filled with independent media, protesters, and law enforcement from the State Highway Patrol and the remaining National Guard. Two weeks have passed since the shooting of Michael Brown, but relatively little new information has been released regarding the investigation into Officer Wilson's actions. Conflicting accounts have plagued the situation, and a grand jury has been convened to further investigate. Liberty Beat reporter Derek Brose questioned Captain Ron Johnson on uncorroborated reports that Brown had caused a fractured eye to Officer Wilson. Captain Johnson said he had no information to provide. The funeral for Michael Brown is scheduled for Monday morning. President Obama has announced that three White House aides will be attending the funeral. On Saturday, thousands of people marched through the streets of Staten Island to raise awareness about the death of Eric Garner, who was killed July 17th by a New York police officer. The march started at the location of Garner's death and ended at the Staten Island District Attorney's Office. Protesters called for charges against Officer Daniel Pantaleo. Cell phone video shows the officer holding Garner on the ground in a chokehold until he died. Pantaleo has been stripped of his gun and placed on desk duty while a grand jury prepares to hear evidence in September. The medical examiner's office has ruled the death as a homicide. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill, who has a new show called Come and Talk It, live each Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 25th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The City Council of New York recently rejected over 4,000 signatures from a petition effort that sought to give New Yorkers the opportunity to vote on whether or not to investigate high-rise building collapses, including World Trade Center 7. The New York City Coalition for Accountability now has responded to the rejection by reviewing the 4,153 signatures they say the city wrongly invalidated based on voters not writing their registered address. The group says once they prove that they have surpassed the 30,000 required signatures, they will attempt to defeat the city's legal challenge. A decision is expected by mid-September, and by October 3rd, the group will know whether their initiative will appear on the November ballot. If voters approve the measure, it would force the city to investigate all building collapses that happened on or after September 11, 2001. Nearly 500 are dead following the capture of an airbase by Islamic State militants Sunday in northeast Syria. The Times of India reports that at least 346 Islamic State fighters died while capturing the base from government forces. More than 170 government fighters have been killed since the fight for the airbase began last Tuesday. 
The Times calls it one of the deadliest confrontations between the two groups since Syria's war began. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 25th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The FBI has successfully executed a raid on the Visa Corporation, exposing what could be the largest credit card scam in U.S. history. According to authorities, the Visa Syndicate for years fooled millions of Americans by issuing convincing-looking credit cards carefully designed to dupe consumers into spending far more money than they had. Investigators believe the fraudulent corporation also lured victims in with enticing rewards programs and free gifts, thereby trapping them in a spiral of debt they could never hope to repay. According to the results of a groundbreaking new study, 96% of humans would rather be a singing, dancing, animatronic bear. The study finds that a great majority of people on the planet would prefer to trade in their regular lives for one in which they sat on a plastic log, strummed a banjo, and sang songs on a stage with all their goofy bear friends. Respondents also stated that not being a sentient human being with feelings of doubt, sadness, and pain contributed to the decision. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we are brought to you by Bitcoin. We were talking a moment ago about Bitcoin, and we had a call. Actually, we just normally just mention it here and there on the show, but we actually got a call in a few moments back uh, asking specific questions about I it. I love these questions, getting new questions about uh, Bitcoin. Cause yeah, I'm, it's important. I'm past those new questions, and I forget. Well, right, and uh, yeah, and it, I mean, it's obviously something we can't get deep into every time we bring it up, but it is good that some people want to know more about it, and it gives us the opportunity there to explain it maybe a little bit further than just the, it's a decentralized currency taking the world by storm. You can send money to anyone anywhere for next to nothing. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff about Bitcoin, and we went over some of those points in the last segment. If you're new to Bitcoin, or maybe you missed the last segment, you're just tuning in, we're not going to repeat it for you, uh, not tonight, but you can go to weusecoins.com, and that's a great introductory website with a quick less than two minute video right there on the front page of their site makes it really easy to understand the idea. Because Bitcoin is full of some new ideas as far as money is concerned, like cutting the banks out of the picture from money. It's kind of hard to really understand what that means when we say it. Like, how can you have money without a government or a bank? Well, that's what Bitcoin is. So the whole thing is a real paradigm shift. Uh, and there's a lot, there's a, a bit of a learning curve involved, but I think the learning curve is getting shorter or less steep, I think, mm -hmm. over time, uh, because more, more and more companies are able to enter the Bitcoin world without having to ask permission, and they can just come up with these cool ideas, new websites, new features, apps, and functions, you know, to make having Bitcoin, sending and storing and doing things with Bitcoin uh, easier over time. Merchant services providers are, are just... Bit, BitPay and uh, Coinbase are two of the heavies out there. There are competitors to them as well, but those are the two biggies. And they just, they're just they just chomping on each other trying to cut rate and make the best deal possible to give the businesses out there, the merchants who want to accept Bitcoin, uh, the best option. Didn't one of them just get rid of their percentage or something like that? Like they were charging a percentage yeah. or something and they got Bit rid pay. of that? BitPay did? Yeah, 0% transaction is it a transaction percentage or like a withdrawal percentage I believe that was transaction so i think they might hit you for like one percent on withdrawing from bitcoin into cash but it's so low like the prices to do business with bitcoin compared to credit cards are night and day in difference anybody and, who's been in business has all kinds of horror stories about dealing with credit card companies yeah. and you know i asked the same question three years ago that the caller what was his name i don't recall I don't have nice either. gentleman though yeah, yeah. Um, what, what he was asking is why why would i use this i mean i can get along fine you know if i want to avoid seeing a transaction reported i use cash mm -hmm. well you can't use cash in the internet you can't shove nope. hundred dollar bills in the vent slot of your uh, computer and expect them to come out someone's tried that mark 
Yeah, I'm sure they have, and expect them to come out in uh, <laughs> Egypt. But I can send Bitcoins almost instantly a- around the globe almost for free, yeah. for pennies. You know, you bringing the shoving the $100 bills into a vent slot, uh, bringing that up makes me think of tech support stories. If anybody out there wants to uh, give us a good tech support story, uh, you're welcome to do that anytime here at 855 450 free. I mean, the tech support guys have some of the most ridiculous stories you've ever heard about human uh, incompetence. You know, usually when uh, when you're a customer somewhere, this is just something I noticed working in retail when I was younger. It's, it's like customers, I know these people aren't dumb they when get, they're coming in. People get dumb outside of their... Um their, their, their comfort zones. Right. So, like, when you walk into a store, you you enter a zone that not only is outside of your comfort zone, but it's also, you, you're, you're entering a place where you know you'll be taken care of as well, right? Like, if you've got a problem, you can ask an employee, and the employee is going to probably try to, their best to solve that problem for you. So, the classic example of this for me is, uh, where's the bathroom? And, you know, when I was working at Kmart, I'd always just, you know, indicate right down the hall where the big, ba- you know, giant neon sign, sign, eight feet tall you know, on the wall that says restrooms. And look, everybody's done this. Yeah. I've done it. I've done it. And yep. this isn't, it's not dumb. It's just, it kind of speaks to how humans are. Yeah, it's just, well, I mean, you just. Yeah, it's just something that happens to people. You walk through those front doors and, you know, you may be a brilliant mechanic or whatever, but you can't find the restroom in the Kmart uh, or whatever. And I You, you could be a brilliant di- businessman, whoever it is, business person, businesswoman, who cares? I was going to somehow connect everybody. that to Bitcoin, but uh, now I have to... No, your tech, tech support is what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, the tech support stories, right. So, like, uh, one of my favorites was that somebody called tech support saying their uh, their cup holder was was malfunctioning. And of course, it was a CD-ROM drive that they were oh, actually opening no. up, put the uh, cup hole, you know, that they, they were using as a cup holder. So it wouldn't surprise me if somebody in tech support has actually received a phone call from someone who inserted money into a slot on their computer and then was upset that it didn't go where they were expecting it to go. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> So that's why I said if you're in tech support and you've got one of those stories, we'd love to hear from you at 855-450. Free Greg, in the meantime, is in Brooklyn, and you, of course, can bring up anything. Hey, Greg, you're on the air on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm, I love that you're talking about Bitcoin. I actually um, I called in to talk about something else, but uh, I'm really passionate about these technological solutions. My okay. uh, background is actually in uh, tech startups. I've been running a startup for about three years. Um, we we worked on a platform to decentralize uh, social networking, so that's another thing that I think wasn't yeah, Diaspora uh, supposed to do that like three years ago. Yeah, that's the most famous example. Uh, the four guys are actually from my school. I used to go to NYU uh, huh. as well. So, um, but did that ever pan out? out? Like, is that is Diaspora still going? Are people using it? Like, how'd that work out? Well, yeah. Yeah, it actually came out. Um, it's not uh, that much. It doesn't offer that much uh, necessarily. Uh, we had a bigger vision, and I think we've actually accomplished it. We have about a quarter million people using our stuff. Um, but Diaspora is actually being used by, for example, ISIS uh, insurgents right now. Oh my. And the reason they use it is because they've been banned from Twitter, but they can't be banned from the Diaspora network hmm. because it's decentralized. So it's, that's actually an interesting thing to so, think about. And uh, So you're doing something uh, you similar know. to that? You're doing a decentralized social networking site? Right. So when you think about it, when the Internet came out, um, it was mostly designed to be decentralized, not to have a single point of failure, right? So it was designed to be resilient, mm-hmm. and if some computers went down, then you could still send an email to someone down the hall. Um, <clears throat> but... There's a lot of interesting things that happen around social uh, where people connect to each other, which have until now have mostly been solved in centralized ways. For example, Facebook, um, you sign up, you post your photos, you indicate who your friends are, and your friends can only see those photos if they're part of Facebook as well, And because otherwise Facebook doesn't know if they can show them the photos. Mm-hmm. So in other words, everyone has these network effects which keep increasing the cost of leaving the network and so the internet turns into these silos, where it, right? You know, it attracts everybody. People say and it's that kind of like government. People say that the internet is half Facebook and half Google, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I mean, it's it's beginning it's not quite 
untrue, but right. It's, it, well, I mean, it it speaks to some of the major problems of centralization on the internet. But how do you solve it? Like the thing with di- diaspora or di- diaspora or whatever, uh, this alternate to Facebook. Right. Was the trick was to get people to leave Facebook, and when I went to sign up for Diaspora, I wasn't blown away by it or anything like that. So I had no real reason. There was no incentive for me to go there. That seems to be the real trick. Is like, how do you get people off of Facebook? You really would have to have a killer product, wouldn't you? Exactly. Actually, that's why I'm so interested in a lot of the freedom movements and decent because I'm interested in decentralizing things. But I look at it from a practical point of view. You can compare Facebook and Google, for example, to countries and governments who have a lot of resources and they uh, you know devoted a lot of them to creating a great service that's easy to use for most people you don't have to think about it and on the back end you know they have to solve all these giant problems with server farms where they have millions of people you know uploading billions of resources and trillions of bytes and they all have to make it work all the time right mm-hmm. so when someone decides to create an alternative though they may have 10 people working on it um, they may put out something like Diaspora, but that's nothing compared to everything that Facebook offers. And so people are like, yeah, that's nice, but like, what about all this stuff that I would get with Facebook? I can't get it with Diaspora. I think that's actually a parallel to if like a libertarian community decided to completely start over and you know have all their own services. And uh, people might say, okay, well, uh, that's great, but what about all the nice goodies that I have in this uh, state government? No doubt. Uh, under the Greg, government? stand by. If you have more, we can come back, and your thoughts are welcome as well on Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. Just dial toll free. 855-453. Eight, That's a number brought to you by Pro XPN. It's 855-450-3733. And here in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget to visit Derek J. on his website, derekj.me. Mark, tell me about my magic mud. I was using some last night. Well, what'd you think? It's Well, I've used it many times, so obviously I like it. Yeah, I like love the experience. I've been using my magic mud Either every other day or every third day for, mm -hmm. I guess, about six weeks, maybe two months, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. It's been some time. It was before Porkfest. Maybe it's like three months. I don't know. And at first, I used it every night. And it within the first application, I could tell a difference as far as the stains on my teeth. Within four, all the stains were gone. And my teeth are now as white as sort of they're supposed to be. And it doesn't have anything sort of chemical and weird in it. Obviously, everything has chemicals in it. But sort of... Uh, it's natural. It's bentonite clay and charcoal. You know how charcoal you use for filters. It goes in, it grabs the stuff in the water, bonds to it, and pulls it out. Well, that's the same thing with the charcoal that in My Magic Mud. It goes in, and it's very aggressive in bonding to the bad stuff in your mouth. My mouth feels cl cleaner than it ever felt before. I don't have a film on my teeth in the morning. It feels they my teeth feel polished and uh, great, and I just recommend it. Now, many times people with sensitivity will uh, claim that my magic mud is uh, good for them, and folks that don't like the taste of toothpaste have uh, commented that my magic mud doesn't have a taste. They do have a mint version though. So it's My Magic Mud. Go to MyMagicMud.com. Watch the video from biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole as he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. There were Listeners are saying they're loving it. I'm looking yep. at the Free Talk Live Amplifier group where yep. people are saying great stuff. I was just going to mention that. Yep. Everybody who gets this seems to really love it. So it's MyMagicMud.com. You can actually see another video that we link to at Mud.FreeTalkLive.com. All right, let's continue here. You can bring up what you want. We still have Greg with us for some final thoughts. I know you weren't calling necessarily to talk about Bitcoin, but I wanted to make sure you had a chance to call to talk about what it was you were calling about. So go ahead, Greg. No, no. Uh, yeah, no, actually, this is a topic, a uh, big topic, and I love to talk about it. Maybe in a few months once we launch, uh, I'd love to come on the show and uh, tell you more. You're talking um, about this about decentralized it. social network that you've been working on uh, as a business. Yeah, I'd be very excited to hear about that. I mean, again, it's going to be have to be something special to attract people away from Facebook. That's not to say it can't be done. And, I mean, not you can't stay on top forever. If, if Woolworths went out of business, maybe at some point we'll see the death of Facebook. It's also a really tricky thing, Greg, to be able to call on Free Talk Live and sort of talk about your business without talking about it in sort of a – commercial and promotional way because obviously <laughs> we make uh, money with uh, commercials i'm not saying you can't i'm just saying that you know you, you really have to present this in a way that is very um this is how it benefits the listener well i still am looking forward to hearing about yeah, it I, I I mean, hear anything about it. that can help people get the hell off of facebook mm -hmm. i support um while the at the <laughs> same time i'm still on facebook yeah I, I, and by the way i'm in no rush to promote this thing because we need to make sure it scales and we need to finish it and, like you said, get it to the point where people actually want to use it over Facebook. Yeah. But I do I, – I love to talk about sort of the dynamics, the uh, the group dynamics that arise. I, I basically 
spend my a lot of my time studying about how organizations form and how they're run and how they deal with each other. Uh, because you can imagine designing a tool like this, uh, you have a lot of responsibility to get it right and to make sure it benefits the most amount of people to let them do what they want. Greg, looking forward um, to hearing more. I thank you for the call tonight. Let's go to Lucas. He's on the line in Raleigh listening to Talk Radio 850. Hey, Lucas. Hey, I thought your analogy to a retail storefront was really interesting. And particularly, you said that the people in the retail store who are employed there would be there to help the customer. And I just took that with a grain of salt. And I thought yeah, the main reason the employees are there is they are paid to help separate the customer from their money. So when you walk into retail storefronts, typically they don't put the bathroom, if they should have one, at the front of the store. They put it as far away from the front of the store as possible. So you mm -hmm. have to walk past as many products as possible. And stores like Kmart and Walmart, big uh, retail uh, storefronts tend to have a whole lot of visual clues, visual cues in the store that are designed to get the customer to notice store displays of mm -hmm. products they would want to buy yep. to get them to spend more than they would want to spend. So I never would be surprised working in a retail environment if somebody couldn't find something because they're, the seller doesn't care whether you find the particular thing you're looking for. They just care whether you leave some money behind. And they want you to leave more money behind rather than less. And they want to want you to spend it on things that they make more profit on rather than less. Mm -hmm. But I'm often and asked, that's the same is true with Facebook or anything else, right? They are there to make money. They're to they're to monetize your experience so they make as much right. money as possible. And that's sure. why I don't trust Facebook or any other company that's a social network because if I don't pay them. They're taking something from me without right. my knowledge. If you're if you're not the customer, you're the product, mm. and that's what's really is the the case with uh, with Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. And, and Google. Yeah, and there's a, there's a competitor out now in sort of the, the Liberty community is Liberty.me, and the intention there is is to give a social network site to people who like Liberty stuff, and yeah, you got to pay for it. Yeah, but I, right, I totally right. understand you where you're coming pay, from. You have to pay for it. And, and the tricky part with something like that is you might pay for it and then still come to find out 10 years later they stole all your data. Could be. So That's you a good can point. hope they won't, but you won't know until later, and you may have to sue to know for sure. Lucas, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from on that, and you really shouldn't trust uh, anybody. It's always buyer beware out there. I mean, you shouldn't trust us either. We're just some guys on the radio, right? Uh, you don't know us from Adam. Copy out and tour. Yeah. I, I would always rather speak to experts, and I hope to, but I can't always count on it, and I can't even count on the experts being on my side. Absolutely. That is how it goes. Lucas, good call. Anything else you want to share tonight? Thank you. No, that's it. Thanks for Thank making it. Glad you guys are out there in Raleigh on Talk Radio 850. We continue with Rick in Phoenix listening via KU Band on Galaxy 19. Hey, Rick. Yeah, hello, guys. How are you? Welcome, sir. It's nice to hear from somebody listening on our satellite channel. Uh, we know you're out there, but don't get uh, don't get a whole lot of calls from that. It gets Ian very vindicated, I can tell I you. I love it. He I, just, yeah. <laughs> he's just full <laughs> of himself right now. All right, Rick, so what's on your mind tonight? Yeah, well, it's loud and clear. That's why I like that dish. Sure. Well, I had a, had a, a question or two about Bitcoin. I was looking into getting into it. And uh, I think it was blockchain that you were advertising. I'm not sure uh, that you were talking about. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. uh, we um, definitely like to talk about blockchain.com as a easy to use, you know, first Bitcoin wallet, easy to go get at blockchain.com. Did you try it? Yeah. Well, I went there and, you know, began setting up, uh, setting up my wallet and what have you. And um, <clears throat> I live way out, so I don't have cell service here. And there was an issue with, getting a text notification, you know, uh, so I couldn't uh, couldn't finish setting up the wallet until I could uh, or get a cell phone, which I, I did now. But anyway, I was doing a little bit of in, uh, investigating into the uh, uh, Bitcoin, and it was saying that it's getting more and more difficult to mine for Bitcoins now. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. time goes on, you're going to need a more and more powerful computer. The good news is, Rick, you don't have to do the mining. There are other people out there doing that. But let's talk more about it. If you want, hang on. We can continue the discussion. More with Rick in Phoenix. He's listening on satellite. We'll tell you how to do that here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here. You can bring up anything that you want. And you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. There's more on the way. It's Free Talk Live.
Hi, I'm Phil Grandy from Phil's Gang. If you've been nervous about investing in the current stock market, then you need to listen up. Phil's Gang is having a free webinar on Saturday, September 13th. That's going to be at noon Eastern time. You're going to learn how to invest in this type of market, not just the stock market, but you're going to be investing in yourself. Don't miss it. To sign up, go to LearnStocksForFree.com. That's LearnStocksForFree.com or call 877-600-4264. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about, well, whatever you want to discuss here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, the we in the studio tonight is me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. So many features, all totally free. So go and enjoy again at freetalklive.com. Drewsdefense.org is where you can go to support uh, the other guy, one of the other guys who's being charged in the Silk Road 
situation. As you may know, uh, the Silk Road is an underground drug marketplace, or the original one, uh, Silk Road 1.0, if you will, was an underground drug marketplace, as well as other things. Even some legal products were sold there. But anyway, the FBI took it down. They certainly were known for selling drugs. Yeah, in October of 2013, they arrested the uh, the alleged mastermind, Ross Ulbricht, uh, a.k.a. supposedly Dread Pirate Roberts, the name that he allegedly used on the site. He's been charged with all kinds of things, but he wasn't the only guy arrested. A few months later, they arrested Andrew Jones and uh, Gary Davis and another gentleman. Different, like, international arrests, coordinated arrests around the world, Australia. Another guy was in Ireland, I think. Well, good thing they arrested all those people because there's no Silk Road anymore. Oh, wait, yes, there is. Oh, Silk Road wait. 2.0. Yeah, actually, there's a lot more of them now. Right. Yeah, there was several that popped up, uh, sort of competitors in the absence of the initial Silk Road. And it only took another month for a new Silk Road to to rise from the ashes, uh, so to speak. And they but haven't it, even finished prosecuting the first one. It's true. And uh, so uh, Drew, and, and a.k.a. Andrew Jones, uh, Andrew Michael Jones, he is facing almost all the same charges as Ross Ulbricht, and he doesn't have near the press coverage. I mean, hardly any press coverage has been given to uh, to Andrew Jones. So we're trying to bring some attention to him. He's actually a Free State Project participant, interestingly enough. He's mm-hmm. accused of being basically the right-hand man of Dread Pirate Roberts. Inigo was allegedly his name on the site. But he ran a message for him, right? No, that was another guy. Oh, my mistake. No, this was one of the admins. Uh, Inigo was one of the two main admins on the site. There was Inigo and Libertas, mm-hmm. and both of them have been, uh, both me- well, two men alleged to be those guys have been arrested. One mm-hmm. of them is Andrew Jones, and you can support his defense with Bitcoin and PayPal uh, through DrewsDefense.org. That's DrewsDefense.org. Org. Let's go back to Rick. He's in Phoenix, been talking about Bitcoin. And Rick, I uh, you had, I think, a, que- a question, but I didn't take notes. <laughs> what were you saying right before we uh, we went to break there? Well, I'm just saying I'm, I'm new to Bitcoin. And, right. Uh, you got the I, app. Uh, oh, it was yeah, the mining. Thank you. Mark just reminded me. You were asking about mining. Uh, this is what happens when How I don't do you get write the things Bitcoin? down. Right. So you can actually just buy Bitcoin with cash. Uh, you don't have to mine the Bitcoin to get them. Uh, th- so you can go to ExpressCoin.com. That's a great location to purchase Bitcoin. They make it very easy with... Uh, a fraction of a Bitcoin for $50 or yes. something like that? Yes. In fact, with ExpressCoin, can- if you buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoin and you use code FTL, I'm glad you asked because I didn't mention it when we talked about it before, but if you use code FTL, you can buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoin with no transfer fee at all. So there's really no no cost whatsoever uh, to that beyond the time that it takes to go to expresscoin.com and learn how to do it. So the mining thing is kind of how Bitcoin, sort of like mining for gold, is kind of like how Bitcoins come into existence. There are people out there who have spent quite a bit of money on computer hardware that's very, very powerful to do this mining. Essentially, the mining is uh, ans- you know, it's basically doing cryptographic math. Uh, it's very complicated sort of crypto mathematics and it gets more complicated as more people get into the arena but right. it's, but Ian's right here when it comes to mining um, mining is as relevant to the Bitcoin user as printing dollar bills is relevant to the US dollar user right the average so user you don't will need never... to be able to create US dollars on your uh, laser printer in the same way you don't need to be able to mine bitcoins. Not an exact uh, analogy because printing out your own dollars would be counterfeiting, whereas mining bitcoins, you are creating well, bitcoins. And counterfeiting right. bitcoin is completely impossible. Right. Right. Dollars are a terrible old technology um, that can easily be counterfeited, and they have to employ an, a very you know expensive agency, the Secret Service, that has to chase people all around the country and all around the world. And uh, b- people in foreign countries have very little redress when dealing with uh, counterfeit. You can't counterfeit a Bitcoin. So if I if I set up my computer to do some Bitcoin mining and I happen to find one or something like that, then that's just a little, sort of like I'm um, five hundred something bucks ahead, right? Y- yes, um, you would be essentially. I think you would be awarded. At this point, they're doing awards of 25 Bitcoin or 12 Bitcoin. I can't, can't remember mm-hmm. precisely. I think it's 25. Yeah. But the chances of you winning at this, uh, getting it at this point are, are like a low-level lottery. You'd have to be competing as far as buying mining hardware with big, big companies that are jumping into this game. So 
Uh, there are things called that, mining right. pools. These are all the alternatives for but people. But there's alt currencies you can mine, and you'll certainly have a very good chance of getting some of those. So, Some mm -hmm. of the alternatives to Bitcoin is what right. you're talking about, altcoins as they are called. Um, but then you know, then you'd have to do something with those, like exchange them for something of value, because like the Bitcoin, all, the all they all have a easy to do because there's a bunch of exchanges online. Yeah, um, but no, but what I was going to say about mining pools is uh, when you join a mining pool, you combine your resources, which are likely smaller than you know these big companies. You combine your resources together with other small miners, and then you all get a portion of the the 25 Bitcoin payout. Of course, that requires you to trust the company that you're doing the mining pool with to not take the money and run. Uh, so there's some risks out there involved in mining. It's a kind of a complicated process. I've done I've done it uh, with Litecoin just to try it and see what it was like, and it's kind of a hassle to get it set up. So again, this is not something that you need to even know word one about in order to know that Bitcoin works in order to acquire Bitcoin and in order to use Bitcoin. It's just something that it, like the ultra geeks can get into. What's the going fee to purchase Bitcoin? Good it's question. At uh, ExpressCoin.com, if you get under $40 worth of uh, any cryptocurrency, Bitcoin included, it's free because they want people to get started. Yeah. After that, it's uh, 30 Three percent, so three percent, not thirty-three percent. I'm sorry, yes, to be it's clear. three three percent, which 3 is three percent transaction, yeah. like changing from a currency to another to Bitcoin. And pretty much any time, anywhere in the world, when you exchange from one currency to another, um, you can do that. Um, that you're going to pay some kind of fee. Was so. that what you were asking, or were you asking what the current price of a Bitcoin is? Well, I was just wondering how to get the Bitcoin in the first place. That's what I said. I was doing a little research, and, mm -hmm. and what I was reading was about the mining. I, I wasn't aware that I could just buy Bitcoin. You can just buy them from ExpressCoin.com. There's some other sites uh, that are out there competing, but I found that ExpressCoin has the best rate out there, uh, hands down. You can also buy from an individual as well, uh, or you can earn Bitcoin. That's another way to do it. So our friend uh, friend of the show, Mandrick, who is actually working for blockchain.com, one of the most popular Bitcoin websites out there, uh, he actually started, he got into Bitcoin when he was a professional chef, like a, like a chef at home. What do you call those things? A personal chef. He was a personal chef, and he was actually making uh, baklava on the side. And he was taking baklava orders over the internet, selling trays of baklava and shipping them to places. And he was taking Bitcoin for that. So he actually didn't buy his Bitcoin. He used his effort. He used his work creating a product that he sold for Bitcoin. So that's another way you can get Bitcoin, is if you can find somebody willing to pay you uh, with it for work that you do. Well, that, that's what I want to do. I, I have a product that I sell, you know, and they're $50 each. And, you know, I normally take just personal checks or maybe PayPal sometimes, which I don't like to do. Right. I, I, I usually try to just take a personal check, but then I have to go through the bank and all that. It's uh, a huge hassle. We were talking about this the other day, about how much of a hassle yeah. the banks are compared to Bitcoin. Yeah. It's just huge time saver. So, well, yeah, I mean, if you're taking payment for product, it's a no-brainer to start taking Bitcoin. It usually doesn't take very long to set up an account at BitPay or Coinbase.com and, uh, and you know get merchant-level ser merchant services that, that can help you with that. And if you want to reach a national audience on 160 <laughs> radio stations, you can just email me at marketfreetalklive.com. Hey, Rick, t real quick, how did you find us up on the KU Band satellite? Oh, I've been listening to you for a while, um, you know, on Free Talk Live and now on Genesis. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been listening to you guys off and on. So you uh, knew about you knew we were up on satellite, and you just decided to check us out up there. Well, that's that's just where I happen to be listening to you now. Sometimes I hear you on the internet, but uh, I, I try cool. to use the KU band mostly. Right on, Rick. Thanks uh, for the call tonight, man. I do appreciate hearing from you. Good luck integrating Bitcoin with your business, and we'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping 
helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Moms of America, stand up and stop taking abuse from your kids. I pledge never to let my kid disrespect me ever again. I pledge to stop letting my daughter walk all over me. I pledge to stop living in fear of my son's anger. I pledge never to feel like a bad parent ever again. Because I'm not. I pledge to stop letting my child's behavior control my home. I pledge to be a mom with kids who listen. A total transformation mom. I'm Janet Lehman, co-creator of the Total Transformation Program. We created the Total Transformation to help parents with difficult child behavior. Now I'm giving it away free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. Call 1-800-256-7795. That's 1-800-256-7795. Call now. Call 1-800-256-7795. That's 1-800-256-7795. Hi, I'm Clint Webb, and I'm running for Senate. I have a short cropped haircut, a pretty enough yet accessible looking wife, and a newborn baby that I've dressed in a suit to prove to you that I mean business. For the last 15 years, I've lived my life in such a bland, uncontroversial, and repressed manner that it's almost unnatural. Why? Because I've been preparing to be a representative since I was a child. Most well-adjusted sane men would be hesitant to take a job where their decisions would so drastically affect the lives of so many. But not me. I possess a sort of sociopathic narcissism that makes me think that I should be in charge of everyone. But all of that needs to start here at home, in this beautiful state that I've grown to love since I moved here 18 months ago. Together, we can piggyback some of our state's legitimate needs onto my unquenchable lust for self-glorification. And that's a promise. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. I also said we were talking about some school-related news with a young man who is facing disorderly conduct charges for getting upset at being suspended for writing a story that the administrators didn't like involving him shooting a dinosaur and a couple other violent things. But uh, we can get back into that. Also, teacher charged with rape. She had sex with her 15 year one of her 15 year old students. Actually, excuse me, might not have even been her student, but a 15 year old. Uh, we'll get into the details on that story here as well. Your thoughts are welcome. The toll free number is 855 450 free. By the way, we just had a gentleman calling in listening to us on KU Band Satellite. And it's not something that we really promote very often here on Free Talk Live, but since he called in, I figured I'd mention it. Uh, you can get Free Talk Live via satellite direct to your home, and you do it through what's called free to air. 
Now, the reason why it's called free to air is because you don't have to pay a subscription fee to listen and watch, meaning that uh, we pay to be there. So we pay the satellite uplink facility to put us up on the bird, as they call it, the satellite. And then it's re- you know transmitted down across all of North and Central America, also a good chunk of uh, East, West, Central Africa as mm. well. And anybody with a cheap dish and a cheap receiver and the time and ability to install it, or you can have someone else install it for you. But uh, you know, it's maybe a hundred bucks for the re- for a receiver, maybe a hundred bucks for the dish. Maybe it's more like seventy bucks for the dish. A few bucks on cable, so you're literally up and running for around two hundred dollars if you can do your own install. If you need somebody else to do it for you, you're probably getting close to three hundred or three fifty or something like that. Because it can be kind of a pain to find a satellite and point a dish three, at it. Three months of uh, you know Directv or Dish Network, and you're paid for. Yeah, and then once you buy and install the equipment and get it pointed at the right satellite dish, it'll work as long as the equipment's good for. Like there's no fee that you have to pay every month to do that. Um, and that means you can get Free Talk Live and all the other great LRN.FM shows. So you'll get Derek J with Peace News Now and, you know, all of the LRN programs all there. Now, some of the other sh- channels up there are, are neat, like RT. They've got a channel up on Free to Air. Uh, Al Jazeera America also available on Free to Air. There's a lot of international uh, stuff up there, like uh, foreign language, Arabic, or uh, different countries, you know, different languages, content. That's what it's most popular for in the United States. But in places like Cameroon, Africa, it's incredibly popular, uh, this free-to-air satellite. Because, number one, there's no such thing as cable installations in Cameroon, Africa, or in a lot of other poor places of the world. Cables just it just doesn't exist. They don't have cable. <laughs> uh, there's satellite, because satellite goes everywhere cable doesn't. I mean, satellite is available as long as you can see the satellite in the sky, wherever your location is. So, if, you know, you're, if you've you got mean, a bunch of trees around, then, you know, you can't see the satellite. As and, long as you can point something right. at an unexposed sky. Right. Good point. You can't actually see the satellite itself. but uh, You're going to have people out there looking. Right. You the know where it is in the sky. <laughs> if you, you know, if there's a bunch of trees blocking the way, you're not going to be able to get the signal. But otherwise, pretty much everybody can get this. And so... Very poor places, uh, people with not a lot of money, they can't afford to pay. Even if they had cable, they couldn't afford to pay the cable bill. And so that's probably one of the reasons why cable isn't there at all, uh, because people can't afford luxuries like that. But they can afford these dishes. They're very affordable, very cheap. And again, once you've got it installed, it's good to go. So go and learn more about that at sat.lrn.fm. That's S-A-T dot lrn dot fm we got coverage maps technical information links to where to go and get receivers and things like that just another way that free talk live is dedicated to bringing the program to you the way you want to listen to it yeah and at some point i'd like to talk further about maybe expanding those satellites getting on in europe and uh, other parts of the world because it's great to be on in in uh, central africa where apparently these things are very very popular let's go to nathan he's on the line listening via skype or on the line via skype i don't know how he's listening i presume via internet go ahead nathan that is correct i do listen over the internet and uh <clears throat> unfortunately you're not on sirius anymore so i can't uh, get free talk live on there but uh maybe someday i don't know so it's uh, true I'd love to be back on Sirius XM. Uh, that was uh, just a decision that was out of our hands. The Clear Channel had uh, they basically canceled their agreement with uh, XM, which was something that sort of predated when the, the two companies, Sirius and XM, combined, and yeah. Clear Channel backed out of their deal, I, and they Sirius, lost all their channels. Sirius never made a decision to cancel Free Talk Live. They never added Free Talk Live. Right. We were on with a company that sort of put us on XM. Right. They had channels that they owned on XM, and when right. their deal went away, those channels went away. For, ah, from, the, okay. from the listener's standpoint, it looks for all the world like Sirius just doesn't like Free right. Talk Live. But it, I, I would say that Sirius is likely we're they not didn't even know we were there probably. Yeah, we're not even really on their radar so i would love for listeners to con i'm sorry subscribers of sirius um to an xm or whatever to contact their company and ask them to carry free talk live because that would be helpful i hope we don't get too many contacts all at once <laughs> but kindness is important in dealing with anybody mm-hmm. and getting free talk live on the air well, I wanted to comment on the Molyneux controversy. Michael Dean called in on Friday and You'll said You'll need to describe Mo- this Molyneux controversy. Who is Molyneux mm-hmm. and what is the controversy? Uh, well, Stefan Molyneux of Free Domain Radio, and uh, the controversy is that Michael Dean called in on Friday and said that uh, Stefan Molyneux had uh, used copyright takedown notices to 
take down the YouTube channel of someone crit critical of him. That's, okay, that's so let me expound, expound on that a little bit. Uh, in fact, Derek J., you were talking about this with Davi Barker on last night's Freedom Fiends. Yeah, we dove deep into this topic. And I was listening. And uh, and so anyway, what happened? Stefan Molyneux is a philosopher. He's a, uh, I don't know how he would describe himself. He's definitely libertarian. He definitely uses the, the term philosophy. Vol a voluntarist, maybe. He uses the word anarchist. Does he use anarchist? Okay, so he's an anarchist philosopher. Right. He's become very popular uh, in the last few years, uh, becoming the most, the claimed most uh, popular philosophy podcast out there. He was on iTunes number one, the number one position in iTunes um, at one point. He's been guest hosts He's on uh, had like. 30 million download uh, views on videos online. Yeah, the dude's, he's a huge phenomenon. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And there, of course, when you become popular, you will be criticized. There will be people who have things to say that you won't like. Uh, there will be people who have legitimate critiques in, in some cases. And there are several critiques that have been leveled recently against Stefan Molyneux. And one of them is this copyright claim, which the state, the story goes that there has been a, there had been a critical channel uh, with videos, ex excerpts essentially from Stefan Molyneux's official channel. The critical channel was using those excerpts to make certain points that they wanted to make about Stefan Molyneux, and the claim from Molyneux and his business manager is that they used copyright takedown notices through YouTube to take out the channel. Which, of course, apparently now all the videos from that channel are now on a different channel, so it hasn't stopped the videos. It's just made Stefan Molyneux look unprincipled because he pre he preaches the ideas of freedom. Yeah, and intellectual he, property must die. He specifically speaks yeah. against intellectual property, but then here he is allegedly using intellectual property law and, uh, and the threat of it to take down critics with the excuse... From what I've been told, the excuse for this was that he had to protect his listeners. The claim being that listeners had been uh, doxxed, information had been found out about these listeners, and that that information was being right. posted to one of these channels. I guess there were two channels involved in the takedown. Yeah, but and now one of the uh, channels that had all its videos taken down, all of those are now back up, and the owner of that channel has issued a challenge to all Stefan Molyneux fans <laughs> to go ahead and find the part where he's been uh, critical or where he was threatening or when he was uh, Wait, where doxing. the listeners were, in, were... Find the part where the listeners were the ones that were being well, threatened, Stefan, right? Yes, uh, yes, that's Stefan's claim. So go find it. The videos are available. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he did say that in an interview with Joe Rogan that uh, where he he kind of defended himself from a lot of these accusations. And I, I encourage the listeners to go look at that video because he also addresses the comments about women and uh, the and the, some of the other claims that have come up in this this controversy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he did say that they were posting photos of the of callers' children, their home addresses, and in an attempt to threaten or so. What do you think about this, Nathan? Calling his show. What do you think about this? Well, I was against it, but when he when against he, what? Uh, well, taking down people's uh, you know videos with copyright. But mm -hmm. when he said it was because they were issuing threats, um, posting the pictures of their children, I don't know. It. it uh, Are you a fan it, of? I Stephon guess I don't Molyneux? endorse it. Uh, I I am a fan of his. Yes. Okay, because it it sounds it sounds like you might be. Look, um, I don't understand why he has an obligation to protect his listeners from anything. That sounds to me. Like it sounds a little culty. Well, they are his revenue source. Why are we why are we using that term? That doesn't sound um, culty. That sounds like somebody who's using. Uh, it's not my responsibility as a host of a talk show to protect my listeners. I would agree. I, if you call this show Nathan in Texas and someone finds out who you are and they make a video about Nathan in Texas you know, in the same way that we have, uh, you know, Dave in New York makes videos about us. Somebody else can make a video about him. If somebody makes a, a you know, a video about you and they out your identity and your home address or whatever because they've determined that from researching you and, you know, hearing you on the air and if some how figured that out it's none of my damn business i'm just a host of a talk show but we'll come back with more if you want to hang on nathan it's free talk live hour three coming up next the Lumber Liquidators Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is on with over 250 of the latest styles all on sale now. Get Black Forest Oak Laminate for a crazy 39 cents a square foot. Beautiful and durable bamboo for just $159. Classic pre-finished gunstock oak hardwood for $149. All gorgeous Bella Wood pre-finished hardwood is on sale. Plus get special 24-month financing. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Hurry, this sale ends Tuesday the 2nd. The fall flooring season is here. Why aren't you? America. 
Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, MyMagicMud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.49 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,280 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $503. Antiwar.com reports, Israel continues to escalate its attacks on the Gaza Strip, focusing on residential areas, including an apartment block destroyed overnight, nominally because the huge complex included a Hamas command center. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu followed up the destruction, demanding all Gazans evacuate immediately from every site that has any Hamas usage and to stay away from terrorists. That means there's literally no place to go since everything in the Gaza Strip, including the refugee shelters, have been claimed by Israelis at one time or another as a terrorist site. That's been the continuing theme of the Israeli onslaught on the Gaza Strip, with Israel constantly ordering civilians out of their homes in anticipation of imminent attack, but not a single safe place for them to flee. There's no end in sight to the war either, with another 10,000 reservists being approved for call-up, bringing the total called up during the war to 108,000. Some have been sent back for rest as Israel tries not to leave reservists on active duty for more than a month at a time. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports a New York City man was arrested on Sunday after climbing to the top of the Brooklyn Bridge, where he snapped photos with his phone before answering police demands to come down. The man, identified as Yaroslav Kolchin, faces charges including criminal trespass and reckless endangerment for the afternoon stunt that occurred as the iconic bridge linking Brooklyn and Manhattan was packed with tourists. New York City Police Department said Kolchin ascended a support beam connecting the tower on the Brooklyn side of the bridge which stands about 276 feet above the water. The incident prompted a response from police teams on the ground as well as from the harbor and aviation unit. A police statement said, A uniformed sergeant observed the individual climbing the cable beam and broadcast the suspect's description and location over the police radio. The suspect reached the top of the tower where he walked back and forth and took photos with an iPhone. A helicopter hovered at level with the man, who did not cause any damage during the incident. He eventually descended and was taken into custody. Police said no one was injured. Sunday's climb comes weeks after another high-profile stunt on the bridge when someone apparently scaled the span and swapped out two American flags with white flags. Two German artists have said they carried out that stunt. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports the growing ISIS war against Iraqi Kurdistan is fueling an ethnic divide between Kurds and Arabs, and increasingly that violence is playing itself out as Kurdish checkpoints manned by Peshmerga fighters. Peshmerga fighters are openly beating Arabs they believe to be ISIS, and it doesn't take a lot of evidence to convince them of that. McClatchy reporter Mitchell Prothro reported that Peshmerga cheerfully dragged an Arab out of his car at a checkpoint, roughed him up, and threw him into their trunk. He's Arab, talks like he's from Mosul, and had a Quran in his car. One declared, that's all it takes. The Arab-Kurd divide is a long-standing regional problem and seems to be getting worse as the latest war picks up pace and fuels more refugees from the front lines. Additionally, a Boko Haram leader offered praise for ISIS gains in Iraq and Syria and declared the recently captured Nigerian town of Gwoza to be part of the Islamic Caliphate. Nigeria downplayed the announcement, saying Nigeria's territorial integrity is not in serious doubt. That doesn't seem to be the case, however, as Boko Haram makes mounting gains across the northeast Borno state. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Our planet is but a giant petri dish swirling with pathogens, all mixed by the filthy stirring straw that is the world's fauna. Simply by sitting on her eggs and breathing, this duck unleashes a torrent of avian botulism, cholera, and duck plague into the air. These jousting elk slough off bits of skin and fur, sending millions of harmful bacteria into the air. Our closest relative, the chimpanzee, is itself the fountainhead of AIDS. Bitter at the ascendancy of man, these scheming apes brood this deadly virus in their jungle lairs. Nowhere on earth is safe from the threat of animals. Even in the bitter wasteland of the Antarctic, penguins walk for miles inland, ensuring their afflictions reach every corner of the globe. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything if you dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. A teacher was caught in a hotel with a teenager. We'll tell you more about what happened there in moments. Did she do something wrong? Is it a crime what she did? Well, she is being charged with rape. Uh, We'll tell you more about it. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, we are going to continue a discussion from the last hour just to bring you up to speed. We've got Nathan on the line. He's in Texas. The libertarian movement, for lack of a better term, has recently been all a tizzy over Stefan Molyneux. Now, this is a guy who is a very popular podcast host. He also has been known to appear on other shows like the Joe Rogan Experience, I believe is uh, the name of that. He's filled in for Peter Schiff before. We've had him on the air on Free Talk Live as a guest co-host in the past from the Porcupine Freedom Festival. He's come on just as a guest, a regular guest, uh, for being interviewed about a variety of things. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I know him in person. Mark, you, you I guess his wife and your wife are good friends. I mean, so friends, you know, yeah. You know, we're we're close to uh, to Stefan Molyneux, which is why this is hard to to see happening. All of this, all of these allegations of him and his business manager allegedly using the government copyright laws to take down a, a critical channel, actually two critical channels on YouTube. And that's not all. There, there was a sort of laundry list of, uh, of things that uh, have been going on. Uh, but one of the concerns I've had for over the last year, the, the names, just the names of some of the videos he's been putting out there on YouTube. The truth about, and then fill in the blank with some famous figure or some sort of thing, some sort of event uh, that happened. And I, I just, I find that rubs me the wrong way. Someone claiming to have the truth about everything. I, that doesn't 
That doesn't even oh, seem come plausible. come on. It's just clickbait. It's a way to oh, get right? people. Yeah. Well, it's, people want to know the truth. And so it's maybe you know, that's the truth. Maybe it's not. He's it's certainly offering, one man's opinion. He's offering what he thinks is the truth. Well, if I'm going to put the my opinion out there and call it the truth, that doesn't seem really honest. There, then there was some but well, they're facts based. Things. It's not like his, not from what I've heard. But Michael Dean says he's watched some of them in their opinion. Well, they have, um, the, the, you know, the, he has he's does reasonably well about sort of footnoting and referencing the things that he talks about. But I've left, been left with, uh, you know, watching some of these the truth ofs and, and been like, are you kidding me? This just doesn't seem factual to me. Um, hmm. Looking some of it up and feeling like, well, you know, like, for instance, it was like the truth about slavery and, and the claim. Like, I watched the video and it, and it sort of felt like what was being said was there were more Irish people enslaved in the New World than there were black people. And, you know... That just doesn't sound right to me, and I I need a lot. It, it needs it, that's just stunning to me hmm. to hear something like that. The other uh, long running concern with Stefan and the reason why people accuse him of being a cult leader is this whole defooing thing. And this, this is, is a de term. family of origin, right? This is this like a sort of term. Uh, can cults tend to have? Uh, these so to the libertarian terms. movement, I think I wish Jargon, you'd stop I using right this cult term because it is tossing it out irresponsibly. Why is it irresponsible? This is a critique that has been leveled at Stefan Molyneux. It has been leveled for a long time, and there are reasons why it has been leveled. One of the most common things that you see in cults is the idea of the cult members being encouraged to remove all connection with family and friends and envelop themselves entirely in the cult. Okay, now, so, I'm but not saying he's a cult leader. He doesn't That's just do what that. He, yeah, nor does he advocate for that. He, he advocates for therapy. And for he... And he will say that you should uh, do away with your family of origin if it's damaging or things like mm -hmm. that. And I think that there's – that sometimes his message will feel like you just need to – look, if if your family doesn't agree with you politically um, you know, on the, the ideas of liberty, that you need to let him go. So you're saying that's not what he says? I think that it is not. Let's I mean, bring when, Nathan on the line here. He's the guy who actually listens regularly to Stefan Molyneux. Is that what he says about you know leaving your family of origin? Or what are the parameters normally when that advice is given? Oh, well, it's funny you bring that up. He act In the Joe Rogan interview by reference, Joe Rogan actually plays a clip of him where he appears to be saying that if your family is a bunch of status, then you should leave them. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of argued about, well, that's not really what I was saying. And I mean, you, what was he saying? It's not. He, he was making a factual statement saying that if you have principles that clash with someone else's, eventually you're either going to have to stick to your principles or abandon them. And that's what yeah, he's but saying. The, the, the clip made it seem like like what Mark was saying, though, that you know if you have status, you should cut them out of your life. And uh, so, so to answer the question about the de the defooing, uh, he does recommend therapy. He does say that you know if you're gonna if you're gonna separate from your family or your wife or your child or whatever, you should you know seek therapy. You know ha have professional help when you're doing this, and to think over it carefully before you do it. But Yes, he does say he does definitely recommend this procedure that if your family, you know, ha has abused you in the past, for example, and they refuse to apologize or they refuse to recognize that there's anything wrong, then yeah, then you can, if that's what you want to do, you can. And so just to be clear on life. what you're saying, I just want to make sure I'm understanding you, Nathan. So you're saying that if you've been physically abused, he recommends disconnecting, but not if your family believes in the state. I don't think so, but no, again, he doesn't I mean, make that distinction. I haven't well, seen I haven't seen that exact video that Joe Rogan played, so I don't know if he if he did qualify it before the way he. I'm said. only asking. I'm not asking you about the one Joe Rogan video. I mean, you said you were a fan of Stefan Molyneux, so I'm presuming you've heard him address well, this issue over time. I've heard well, it, right? But it I don't know why it doesn't come up that much. Okay, right. I've heard him talk about this stuff, and I've heard him make statements that sound for all the world like, you know, if your parents don't believe like you, then you should get rid of them. But at the same time, when pressed on this issue, um, you know, he'll clarify mm. that what he means when somebody status, uh, you know, the like ultra status, the sir, yes, sir, father, I'll do the dishes. No, sir. Like this kind of sort mm. of ongoing abuse. And, you know, for Stefan, he's very clear that, um, you know, that... That, that it's it's not just one's political beliefs that we're talking about. I don't even I should, moral beliefs, you know, just beliefs. These things reflect on your daily life. 
if you believe that it is acceptable to bomb people around the world mm-hmm. in order to get what you want, you're going to be an a-hole in your, um, you know, in your life. And this is going to show itself in some way. And if your dad or your mom is a flaming a-hole, then perhaps you shouldn't sub- subject yourself to flaming a-holes. And now that is reasonable. However, is, when yeah. he gets and he does his stuff and he gets into his shorthand, he'll mm-hmm. just say, defooing your family of origin. Like, get rid of them. You know, that kind of thing. And it'll, he'll so, shorthand in a way Because what that- I've understood, for, and again, I'm not a listener regularly of Stefan. I'll hear him every now and then, you know, just by chance or see something online or whatever. But uh, the, the narrative I've heard from some of the critics, and what you're saying to me is this isn't true, what I'm hearing from all three of you. Uh, is this isn't true. But the narrative I've heard is that he has this thing called the against me argument sure. where he will yes. he right. will ask yeah. some, he, he encourages people and it's a smart argument. I I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll encourage people to ask somebody, hey, you know, when you support the government in its war on drugs, you're actually again you know, that's gonna work against me because I smoke pot and that means that I would end up going into a jail cell uh, if you, you know, this war on drugs were to catch up to me. Does mm-hmm. that mean that you support uh, are you against me, basically? You know, do, by your support of the war on drugs, I'm doing a poor job of this, but by your support of the war on drugs, you therefore support putting me in a jail cell. Is that right? You know, basically cornering somebody into saying, why, yes, yes, I do. And then he would suggest, th- the critics are saying, that he would suggest that anybody that does support the government in acting against you is someone you should cut out of your life. And I think you should consider doing that. If somebody says that you should go to jail for the way you act, Mm -hmm. that person perhaps is not the best person to be around. So you're saying I should cut my mother out of my life. Does she think you should go to jail? Absolutely. I had a conversation with her about the war on drugs. I didn't ask her against me because I didn't tell my mom. Well, that's a very important distinction that is made. Specifically, Uh it's about... Against she supports putting everybody else in jail. Me. So why would she support against that? Against anyone, me? everyone else, not against you. Mm-hmm. That's a, a hus- distinction, and it's an important one. If a husband was beating his wife, no one would be saying, "Well, you know, she. Sh- of course, she shouldn't leave. They're family. They're married now." You know, they say this is a voluntary relationship. She opted into it. She can opt out of it. And as adults, even as adult children, mm-hmm. we can talk to our parents and say, "Hey, this is a voluntary relationship. See ya." Oh, absolutely. Yep, does bring that point up a lot. We'll come back with more here. I'm not saying there aren't reasons why you shouldn't cut off your your family from contact, uh, but you know some people are suggesting that maybe you know, maybe you should let it go for more than one conversation. We'll come back well, with more duh. here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Yeah. So does he? I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I, I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works: Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls. You can dial in about anything that you want. Teacher has been found in a hotel room with a teenager and charged with rape. We'll tell you more about it here in a moment. Your calls are welcome. 855-450 free. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. And know that Free Talk Live is brought to you by modup.net. If you need focus and are feeling fatigue, uh, fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts. Look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show that one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. And school is starting up again right here in Keene. It was the first day classes back in college here. So if you are back in school, check out modup.net. Businessmen as well are looking into modup.net. They're talking about modafinil, making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. At modup.net, they've got the highest quality premium modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You get a deep discount when you pay with Bitcoin, 33% off. And don't forget to use code FTL and get 10 free tablets with your order. So go to modup.net, M-O-D-U-P dot net. It's world-class service at a great price for modafinil. Modup. Dot net code FTL. As we continue with Nathan in Texas, he brought up this controversy surrounding Stefan Molyneux, and there are several different aspects to it. We've only covered a couple of them so far. Some are saying that his message is that people should cut off their family after one conversation, but Derek J. and Mark, you're saying that's not the case, that he's saying that the only time you should cut off your family, or defoo, which is sort of the jargon that uh, that is used in the Molyneux podcasts, uh, is only after multiple iterations of conversation, after you've not made any progress or something like that. And apparently there's some horror stories out there of people who have cut off all of their friends and their family because, I guess, you know, most people in our lives don't agree. I mean, unless you're in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project where you literally can be surrounded by like-minded, liberty-minded people as much as you would like to be. Um, you know, in most of our regular lives outside of New Hampshire, we weren't surrounded by liberty-minded people. And so, you know... The idea that cutting all of your friends and family off if they don't agree with you politically could be a really dangerous idea. But that's not – you're saying that's not what he's saying, guys. Is that, 
Is that no, right? he he advocates for people having conversations with their friends and family, multiple uh, long conversations in depth, and and therapy. If you're even considering defooing, uh, he says don't do it without consulting a therapist. Let's go back to Nathan. He's in Texas. Uh, Nathan, there was also some allegations about a lie that was told, and we haven't really gotten into this on the air. Mm. But you had called up Nathan. You had said that Stefan Molyneux, who's this kind of this internet philosopher who's made it big, he's got millions of views on his videos and things like that. Uh, th- that right. you know, there's been some critique around him recently, and that he went on the Joe Rogan show and he answered some of these critiques. And Derek J, you said you had heard, uh, that he told a lie. That you actually yeah. checked into this and you can verify that that was not true. Yeah, what I don't know that if about? Nathan looked into this, but uh, one of the well, first I haven't seen the I haven't seen the the uh, re the reprint or the the copy of the True Sheaves channel. I was going to check that out after the show. Yeah, you'll have to look at that because uh, that's the channel that got shut down because of Stefan Molyneux. And in the interview with Joe Rogan. Most recently, on the 23rd, just I think two days, or uh, on the 21st, he explains that he his wife had never been a, um, who is convicted. a therapist. His wife, who is a therapist, has never been convicted of uh, that which was alleged, uh, that she had uh, suggested defooing without a therapist. Leaving, the fam- yeah. leaving, so leave, family. leaving a family, right. So... So whether she the did queen, or not, but the uh, I remember her getting some kind of uh, you know chastening from the organization she was licensed by or yes. people that she worked with or something like that. And right. Yeah. In the, in the I video, hope Molyneux you misinterpreted this. Not, in the video, Molyneux said she wasn't. Uh, she didn't have her license suspended. I believe is that not correct? The uh, he says that she was never. Um, Char- like that she was never convicted, that she was found innocent of all the charges that were alleged against her, and that's not true. The uh, 2012 uh, document that True Scheibs uh, put online, and anyone can look at for themselves, shows that uh, the allegations against her, um, that they found it was not within the medical practices recommended teaching to defu. Yeah, yeah. And um, that she had been reprimanded, that she had been uh, convicted of these alleged charges. And he said that she hadn't. That well, sounds like a lie. And I, I mean, do I feel to... like they went after him, like they went after him and that they were really, and her, they like went after him. They being the board of whatever. The board. The licensing That, that board. was what I, the impression I got all along. But, you know, you never know with these, whenever you get a license, you're just opening yourself up to the government doing whatever they want. Well, and this really hurt me because I'm a fan of Stefan Molyneux. I've been following him probably since 2009, and he was integral to my conversion into uh, becoming, like, realizing I was an anarchist and a philosophy. So to hear something that I perceived as a lie was a real hard hit. To be like, wait a minute, did he just say something that's not true and I can go verify it for myself? Yikes. Uh, for me, the final straw was, I mean, having heard all this stuff about the def- you know, these people leaving their families and the, him claiming to have the truth about things, that wasn't enough to make me want to remove him from LRN.FM. But when I heard the uh, the story or the when I saw the clip about his, some of his comments about women uh, were very dismissive and uh, seemed unfair Basically, the video I saw was him blaming women for men being a holes. Essentially, that it was all women's right. fault because pick better men. Well, yeah, because right. he says that uh, women are the um, disposers that that men propose and women dispose. That men are the ones who ask for dates and women are the ones who have all these choices that they get to choose from, and they're choosing the a holes. Right, so therefore it's all women's fault that a-holes continue because they keep seeing them and dating them and having sex with them and things like that. And it just seemed, it just seemed uh, really offensive uh, to me. The, why? The way that it was- why? Why not have a little bit of self-knowledge and, and realize that there's some biological part of you that is going to seek an alpha male, if you're a woman, mm-hmm. and that's not always the best, healthiest choice. That sometimes you have to... Uh, override your internal biology and say, "Hey, my brain knows what's best." Um, you know, some of the stuff that I've I've seen, and I've seen very little on this because I don't watch Stefan's stuff like I did. Mm-hmm. There was a there was a time when I watched and listened more, but when when the generalizations are laid out, 
that's when you're going to have problems. That's what mm-hmm. made me uncomfortable and, about that. Uh, you know, I don't know. And but, then I heard about these copyright takedowns. Uh, so I'd actually pulled him off the air on LRN. I had nothing to do with that decision. But how you long? You don't program LRN. It's how true. long can you talk in in uh, specifics? You know, it helps after three thousand podcasts to have some generalities or Agreed. some, some um, shortcuts of explaining something. So yeah, you, like you say, Mark, you're going to have complications when you start generalizing. But he's got to at some point. Yeah. So, and then I heard about these copyright takedowns, which were really disturbing uh, to yeah. me. And those haven't been resolved in any way, shape, or form that I can tell. Um, so, Nathan, uh, I mean, how do you so, feel about but, all this? Well, I'm glad you brought up the copyright thing again, because I wanted to say that I don't approve of that. And Davi actually came up with a great idea that doesn't involve any force. Was this last night on the Freedom Fiends? Indeed. Yeah, we, maybe we can hear that suggestion. I'm sure Derek can uh, give yep. us a recap. Thanks, Nathan, for your call tonight. How can Stefan Molyneux, who's stepped in it big time with this copyright takedown, how can he make right? Because that channel's down. I don't think he can just send a letter to YouTube and have them flip it back on again. I mean, these guys don't have great customer service. We're coming up. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can't fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. 
DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want right here, toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Internet philosopher Stefan Molyneux has been under fire recently by people within the liberty movement and outside of the liberty movement for some controversial things that he allegedly says on his podcast and video series. And if you'd like to comment, uh, would love to hear from you. Maybe you're someone who has disconnected from your family of origin uh, and it went well for you. Things are just swimming, going swimmingly great. Or maybe your life took a real bad turn after that. Apparently some people have, uh, have taken Stefan Molyneux's suggestion and have disconnected themselves from their family and friends because of political differences, or at least they interpreted his suggestion in that way, even if it wasn't actually his suggestion. And how did that work out for you? So whether you're whichever side of the Stefan Molyneux conflict you're on, uh, would love to hear from, from you if you've feel like it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And then coming up, we'll get to the teacher who allegedly had sex with a teenager. And uh, Derek J. will give us Davi Barker's suggestion, the Muslim agorist, his suggestion for how Stefan Molyneux can try to make some of this stuff right. I am headed out to the first annual Marijuana Investment Conference in Houston on September the 8th, and I'll be there mingling and finding out what the trends are going to be in this uh, nascent and burgeoning field of marijuana. The market's new, and it's wide open. Lots of people, the, the right people in the right places are going to make a lot of money. And this isn't some kind of convention where you're looking at, uh, you know, glass pipes or something like that. This is what they're intending to do, marijuanainvestmentconferences.com. They're focused exclusively on bringing investors and legalized marijuana businesses together to create opportunities and grow the sector. What they're going to do is they're going to offer entrepreneurs the opportunity to pitch their businesses and ideas to bona fide investors, whether formally or in a casual networking setting. So please join me at the Weston Houston Memorial City on September the 8th, bright and early register early to uh, actually I, th I think that the uh, the early bird registration might be over at this point but uh, you can go to marijuana investment conferences.com use coupon code FTL when you register um, that helps me out as a matter of fact if I get enough registrations it, it pays for the whole thing for me so um, I'll have some free FTL stuff to give away. Let me know when you register. That way I can, uh, you know, know who's used the FTL code. MarijuanaInvestmentConferences.com, code FTL. All right, so we're going to continue with your calls. They're welcome at 855-450-FREE. But first, Derek J., you were co-hosting the Freedom Fiends last night, FreedomFiends.com. And uh, let's see, you're on with Davi Barker. You guys hit this issue with Stefan Molyneux, the Internet philosopher, uh, who's under fire right now from various different sources, hit this pretty hard last night. One of the biggest controversial and most obviously wrong things I think that uh, that has happened here is that his business manager, and as was pointed out, they work very closely with one another, so it wasn't like his business manager did this without Stefan's approval or knowledge, uh, but his business manager apparently had YouTube pulled down some channels that were critical of Stefan Molyneux, under the excuse that they were doing it to try to protect their listeners who are allegedly being doxxed and harassed by those channels. There has been a challenge presented by one of the challenge or channel owners to say, prove it, prove the claim that there was any harassment going on. Here's all the videos. They've been re-uploaded to another channel. Show me where this has happened. Um, as I pointed out, even if it did happen, it's not my job as a talk show host to protect my listeners. That's another story. It's clear that a lot of people are upset about this because Stefan Molyneux is supposedly anti-intellectual property. Ostensibly, he's told people, hey, use my videos, make stuff out of them, mm -hmm. right? Um, and now somebody did that, and he didn't like what the content was, so now that channel was used, you know, the, the copyright notice was used as an excuse to take that down. So, he, so they allegedly used intellectual property protections offered by the government in order to inflict harm upon a critic. 
And so what was the proposal to try to make good for that situation? Because that channel's still down. The True Shibes channel on YouTube, it's down. Hmm. And so, you know, with the, with the company the size of YouTube, you can't just send those guys an email and say, hey, uh, I made a mistake on this whole DMCA takedown notice. Uh, can you just go ahead and rescind that? I don't imagine that's something that's too easy to do. I don't know. They do send you emails when you submit a takedown notice and when you're on the receiving end. So you do get some sort of email communication with YouTube when that happens. It's I've been on the automated, receive- though, isn't it? I, yeah, but I've been on the receiving end of these. And I've also been able to email back to YouTube and say, like, hey, look into this. There was mm-hmm. no bullying going on in these videos. But Davi's recommendation, I think, is a good one. And he said to make whole true shibes the youtube channel that was originally the critic here and had their youtube channel taken down to make him or her whole the correct solution or one would be for uh stefan to go onto the youtube channel that one only and do a live call in criticize me ask questions of me sort of mm-hmm. presentation that way it brings the viewers that true shibes lost back to that channel you know stefan is bringing all of this attention and subscriber to base the to the new channel and instead of being in the position of power the throne that has the mute button or ends the call instead he would be in the hot seat and he would be taking questions would not have the ability to mute callers and would have to answer those questions and be held to account so is that doable? Like I've never done. You do the live YouTube's that on, can be done on Peace News now at DerekJ.me. Yes. Um. So he. So whoever owns this new channel wouldn't have to give Stefan their login information to have him run a show on on their own channel. No, it's my understanding you can give other uh, Google Plus accounts access. So mm-hmm. like we have an activist channel here in Keene where several different users can share login info to the same YouTube channel, even though they're all have different sign ins. So or maybe what they could, could be do, doing that. He, or maybe what they could do instead of giving Stefan their login info, maybe they could just create this show like you do with Peace News Now. And like have a Google then, Hangout, bring sure. Stefan into the Hangout. That way he's just on their show as their kind of featured guy. Sure, there are lots questions. of solutions, but the, the crux of it is that Stefan needs to answer to these criticisms publicly. Uncensored. Uncensored on someone else's channel so that it looks, you know, it's not like, oh, hey, he put out this uh, piece and he's trying to cover himself here. This is like, and he won't I'm benefit submitting. From the views, yeah, I'm submitting, I'm being humble, and I'm going to uh, bring you the truth. Yeah, and I think that that's um, I, I, what I feel the central point of the uh, the complaints about Stefan isn't the, the things that he's done or said on the air. It's sort of who he is. It's he presents himself as this is he, call, he calls the show a philosophical conversation the most important philosoph- the, the the most popular philosophical conversation on the internet but i often find out feel like um like it's not a conversation it's what stefan thinks and that i think is what rubs people the wrong way in many cases is that stefan is one of these people, and I think like me, that just thinks they're right all the time. I well, think didn't I'm, he say that the liberty movement would be set back like 2,500 years if it weren't for his show? I don't know that he said that, but it is a I've pretty audacious thing to say. Yeah. I say audacious things about Free Talk yeah. Live, like Free Talk but Live. But I'm here to call you out on those things. Y- and I think, that's where, I think that's where you know the difference between a show like ours and a show like Alex Jones or Stefan Molyneux which maybe it wasn't their intention, but over time seems to create this cult of personality. Where well, they end up being the preacher as opposed yeah. to, um, you know, a, a member of, uh, you know, sort of the congregation having a discussion. They end up being the central person mm-hmm. handing down truth. And that's that's always wrought with problems. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Tom's in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Tom. Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring up a thing about Internet freedom. And what I was thinking of, you know, you get these email scams that uh, start out like, my name is Mumbo Jumbo Guano Guano, and I work at this bank in Nigeria. And, you know, they're just trying to scam people. And okay? something bad's going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're supposed to send them all this money so that they send you all this more money. Right. Okay, stuff like that. Well, uh, how about tell those people, you got the talent to do this. Why don't you people set up, like, Internet services, like web hosting services and websites 
that can take the content that is being banned in Europe, public information that has just gone out of date, or uh, stuff like that, that is going to be illegal uh, uh, in a few years, and publish it from Nigeria, where the governments that are offended can't touch you. Thanks, Tom, for the call. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking one world whey, I know noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but enough time for you with your thoughts. All you have to do is dial in toll-free here at 855 855- 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. With you in studio. Ian here. 
Derek J. And Mark. Check out Derek J's website, DerekJ.me. There's a video posted from this weekend where you and I and Chris Cantwell went to cop blocking in Keene. It was more of an outreach project than anything else. Yeah, um, my intention was to film the police, but instead I ended up handing out Know Your Rights cards to lots of college students. And did people love it or what? They were crazy about it. They thought <laughs> they thought some of us worked for the college. Like, oh, are you handing these out? Are you orientation <laughs> leaders? Like, helping us not get busted by the police? Thank you. Yeah, the college like, won't do that for you. Kid. No. <laughs> but you should know your rights. You yeah. can refuse a search. So uh, we, we have these flyers. They're the cop block warning flyers. It's all about knowing your rights. A real quick breakdown of, mm-hmm. you know, record the police. Ask if you're free to go. Am I being detained? Just rolling down the list. Don't talk to. So there's, just, there's a little bit of contradictory information. One, don't talk to the police. Two, ask if you're being detained and free to go. Like if you're going to talk, those are the things that should be coming out of your mouth. Not right. answers to their questions, but in, in fact, more questions mm-hmm. uh, for them. So it's a great little card that uh, we came up with here with uh, coplock.org and we handed out easily 200 of those within the the hour or two that we were out there and uh, and not even all of the students were back for college yet so this coming weekend is going to be another good one for us. You can do this kind of stuff where you live, too. Uh, There's no reason why you can't. I recommend you move to New Hampshire and get active here because there's more supporters of Cop Block, I think, probably in New Hampshire, concentrated in one place, likely than anywhere else in the world. In fact, at the same time, Derek J., that you and Chris Campbell and I were out doing that outreach in Manchester, uh, there was a DUI checkpoint Cop Block going on. So we had Cop Blocking going on statewide on Friday night here in New Hampshire. Very exciting stuff. Yeah, coast to coast across the <laughs> across the Shire. Coast to, well, not really coast. It's the coast of the Shire. We're on the <laughs> west coast of well, the true, Shire. Well, true, there's a river, right? There's a yeah. river that goes up the uh, the west side. So there's a coast on that river, Yep, I think, at most parts. Some parts of it? Yeah, you, all have, of it. you have to cross it to go into Vermont. So, all right, let's change uh, gears here and go back to the story, or to the story, which we, know, we haven't started yet, from HuffingtonPost.com, an Oklahoma teacher who is under investigation for an inappropriate relationship with a student, faces a slew of charges, including second-degree rape, Hmm. after police in Mississippi say they caught her in a hotel room with a 15-year-old student. Hmm. Jennifer Caswell is 28. She's a former English teacher at Hollis Middle School in Hollis, Oklahoma. She resigned from her position in April amid allegations she was having an illicit affair with a student. Prosecutors told the Oklahoman that initially they didn't really have hard evidence in the case, only reports of suspicious behavior. Things that kind of raised an eyebrow, said the assistant district attorney Eric Yarbrough. People seeing a teacher alone with a child may or may not be anything. It could just be innocent contact. Sure. The child said nothing's going on. She's just a nice teacher. But then, on June 18th, police in Olive Branch, Mississippi, remember, she's from Oklahoma, say they caught Caswell with the boy at a Best Western. Authorities say subsequent investigations... She's just a nice teacher. Nothing's going on. They're studying. Uh, Revealed that the former teacher and the victim had sex... The victim had sex multiple times in April and May of this year, including twice at school, according to the Lawton Constitution. That's a newspaper, I believe. In a police interview, the minor allegedly said that Caswell had sex with him in a classroom at school three days before resigning from her job, and then again several times in her car and at the victim's home in the weeks following her resignation. The Mississippi incident happened more than 650 miles away from the victim's home, uh, hometown while he was away visiting his mother. The victim told police that he hopped... Wow, she chased him across the country. He hopped a fence in a church parking lot to meet Caswell, who appears to have traveled from Oklahoma to rendezvous with the boy. Caswell now faces three counts of second-degree rape, two counts of enticing a child, and one count of forcible sodomy. According to the Oklahoman, Caswell had been married prior to the investigation into the alleged sex abuse. She was formerly known as Jennifer Sexton, but since uh, obtaining the divorce, she's restored her maiden name. So she's facing three counts of second-degree rape for encounters with this teenager, 15 years old. So what are they calling, what is second-degree rape? Is that statutory rape? That's a good question. I presume that's a Mississippi charge because that's where she was caught. I would but, presume uh, the same. 
Uh, but I'm not real clear on that. Well, the charges are ridiculous, but I have to say, I think that this woman is despicable that she couldn't, uh, I mean, really traveling all that far while the boy was visiting his mother. He's 15 years old. Leave the boy alone. You can find someone else. (laughs) Like seriously, that's pretty desperate, right? Yeah. You're traveling 600 plus miles to be with this kid. You couldn't wait until he got back to Oklahoma. (laughs) Please find someone your own age at a club or something. I mean, are you that desperate? I don't know what we're talking about as far as desperation. I remember this case in Florida where this woman um, was a teacher. and Mary Kay Letourneau? Is is that her name? Is that Florida? It sounds right. The Um, one where it worked out in the end after she went to prison? She she goes to, I think, this. it's crazy. Tell me if I've got this wrong, Ian. But essentially, she has relations with this kid, gets in trouble. And then, like, the kids, uh, they're said, never go near each other again. They get caught together again. That's right. She got Aww. pregnant again. Uh, she got pregnant. Yeah, right. She was pregnant once and then pregnant twice. As, 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 then she goes to jail for being near prison. this kid. Prison for uh, being near this kid. Then she gets out and they get back together. He's waiting for her. And he raises his kids All with right. her. And I don't know what to say about any of these situations. I mean, but they're many, messed up. That's, that's what you say. These people are messed up. Why? Well, why is she messed up? I, because this is not normal behavior. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know what normal behavior is not either. This. Everybody does abnormal behavior, and if this is the love of your life and they happen to be younger, I suppose the best thing to do is to wait until they're legal. And if they are the love of your life, they'll wait around for you. But I think True, that he was Letourneau, not. If he was fi- not legal. If a 15-year-old is the love of your life and you're 28, you've got some growing to do. Maybe so. What difference does it make? <laughs> I guess if it's consensual, it seems like it is. It seems like this boy was bragging about the number of times that he was doing it with his teacher. Well, of course, the law says it's not consensual. The law says he can't consent because he's That's not ridiculous. 18 or what. I mean, I'm going to presume it's 18 in Mississippi. I, I just guessing that he knows south. what he's doing i'm just saying you know play musical chairs with somebody else go <laughs> like please i think well, it's good there advice. Are options i think that's good advice i would not disagree with you that if your love is uh you know is strong and undying that perhaps you should stick you know hey just think about this for a year or two until somebody moves into the age of majority and can make a decision and well, then, in her case, it was so strong and undying, she couldn't stay in Oklahoma, and she traveled 650 miles to meet the boy sick. in a hotel room. That is sick. Right. It does seem— <laughs> She it, couldn't use a service. She couldn't call up some <laughs> gigolo or something. I don't know that they actually Jeez. have those. <laughs> like a, finding a gigolo, a male gigolo for a woman. <laughs> I think they just call that a dude. I mean, like, I don't think that, that is a thing. Well, do they I mean, exist? Do, wait, do— gi- no, is, Now, a gigolo, is that like a male prostitute? Yeah. Or, okay. Yes. So most male prostitutes are probably being hired by other males, aren't they? Aren't yeah, they? generally, but yeah. they do exist. They For are there. females, you mean? Yes. Or do they probably. exist in Oklahoma? I don't because know. Because your that. first advice, which is go to a bar, is probably better advice. Okay, they have bars in Oklahoma. Find find a guy there. The only thing that you know strikes me as inappropriate about teacher student relationships is the fact the power differential. The power differential that's, is very strong, uh, very that's important. The, to that's me. the issue. That's the reason why it shouldn't be allowed is because of the power differential. But otherwise, who cares about? You it's know, not who like she's the, seeing. It's not like she's taking advantage, being like, "Oh, I'm also powerful." Like you know, the the kid is feeling like he can probably get away with talking in class and with uh, well, any kinds true. of stuff because he's got the relationship. He's got the power in this relationship. You're right about that. I mean, with the law. On on, you know the statutory rape law certainly he would have had the power in that relationship mm-hmm. but but the argument against in the absence of a statutory rape law then the argument against it would be that well she can give him a bad grade if he doesn't have sex with her or something like that yeah uh-huh. i think that um, a teacher having That's, sex with a student is grounds for firing but and not prison should go on a permanent record and that they should not be a teacher any longer right that well, i think that that's um you know the kind of punishment that i would like to see but I want to know, when you're talking about using the term rape, I think that it is uh, very distasteful to use a term like rape to describe Mm. what goes on with consensual sex with a person who might be under the age of majority as rape. And that when you're talking about people who have really been raped, when you're talking about the woman who has had her, you know, her face bashed in and been, you know, raped in horrifying ways, and then you call this rape, I think you really really need to check yourself as far as terminology. Mm-hmm. It yeah. does a disservice to the real victims. Absolutely. Now, of course, you're welcome to comment on this, but you'll have to do it tomorrow night because we're out of time for now, but you can join us then. 
at freetalklive.com or on your local radio station if you get us during the week on the radio. If you don't get us on the radio, then contact your local talk station and ask them real nicely to have some Free Talk Live. Don't forget to check out Derek's website, derekj.me. It's been Ian here with you. And Derek J. And Mark. See you tomorrow at freetalklive.com. In the meantime. Amer- I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make... Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Holy oh, crap. Yeah. Oh. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Why are you running from Because you're scared of me. What you am I being now. detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.49 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,280 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $503. Antiwar.com reports, Israel continues to escalate its attacks on the Gaza Strip, focusing on residential areas, including an apartment block destroyed overnight, nominally because the huge complex included a Hamas command center. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu followed up the destruction, demanding all Gazans evacuate immediately from every site that has any Hamas usage and to stay away from terrorists. That means there's literally no place to go since everything in the Gaza Strip, including the refugee shelters, have been claimed by Israelis at one time or another as a terrorist site. That's been the continuing theme of the Israeli onslaught on the Gaza Strip, with Israel constantly ordering civilians out of their homes in anticipation of imminent attack, but not a single safe place for them to flee. There's no end in sight to the war either, with another 10,000 reservists being approved for call-up, bringing the total called up during the war to 108,000. Some have been sent back for rest as Israel tries not to leave reservists on active duty for more than a month at a time. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. 
Reuters reports a New York City man was arrested on Sunday after climbing to the top of the Brooklyn Bridge, where he snapped photos with his phone before answering police demands to come down. The man, identified as Yaroslav Kolchin, faces charges including criminal trespass and reckless endangerment for the afternoon stunt that occurred as the iconic bridge linking Brooklyn and Manhattan was packed with tourists. New York City Police Department said Kolchin ascended a support beam connecting the tower on the Brooklyn side of the bridge which stands about 276 feet above the water. The incident prompted a response from police teams on the ground as well as from the harbor and aviation unit. A police statement said, A uniformed sergeant observed the individual climbing the cable beam and broadcast the suspect's description and location over the police radio. The suspect reached the top of the tower where he walked back and forth and took photos with an iPhone. A helicopter hovered at level with the man who did not cause any damage during the incident. He eventually decided and was taken into custody. Police said no one was injured. Sunday's climb comes weeks after another high-profile stunt on the bridge when someone apparently scaled the span and swapped out two American flags with white flags. Two German artists have said they carried out that stunt. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports, the growing ISIS war against Iraqi Kurdistan is fueling an ethnic divide between Kurds and Arabs, and increasingly that violence is playing itself out as Kurdish checkpoints manned by Peshmerga fighters. Peshmerga fighters are openly beating Arabs they believe to be ISIS, and it doesn't take a lot of evidence to convince them of that. McClatchy reporter Mitchell Prothro reported that Peshmerga cheerfully dragged an Arab out of his car at a checkpoint, roughed him up, and threw him into their trunk. He's Arab, talks like he's from Mosul, and had a Koran in his car. One declared, that's all it takes. The Arab-Kurd divide is a long-standing regional problem and seems to be getting worse as the latest war picks up pace and fuels more refugees from the front lines. Additionally, a Boko Haram leader offered praise for ISIS gains in Iraq and Syria and declared the recently captured Nigerian town of Gwoza to be part of the Islamic Caliphate. Nigeria downplayed the announcement, saying Nigeria's territorial integrity is not in serious doubt. That doesn't seem to be the case, however, as Boko Haram makes mounting gains across the northeast Borno state. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Zone. I'm Brooke Alvarez. Our top story tonight, Congress has passed a bill naming incomprehensible shouting the official language of the United States. I'm sick and tired of listening to people who say that Americans should not know what they know and that's not what it is and what the policy is. The red-blooded American is what we have in this day and age. Under the new law, public school classes will only be taught in incomprehensible shouting and government agencies will no longer offer translators to non-shouting speakers. In addition, a new test will be added to the naturalization process whereby potential immigrants must prove they have a working knowledge of incomprehensible shouting before they're granted citizenship. The movement started in 2008 with a grassroots organization called Americans for Doing It Right Because We Got It Now Because Who Else Right? Come on! This is the Onion News Network, a tomahawk of honesty in the skull of lies.